It's Nathan LeMaster, I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. At Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way.
Beautiful downtown Houston, Texas is our backdrop not too far from us here from our location tonight for this presentation of Sooner Athletic Conference football on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. It's a fantastic night, not just because we have good old-fashioned college football, it's because a long-time voice and a big-time part of the Antler Sports Network is with me here today. Jared Jones on the ones and twos for this special presentation. And with us is a man that some Antler Sports Network faithful might be very familiar with. Our very own executive producer here at the ASN, Mr. Justin Jackson. Justin, the last time you were here with us, we had a college basketball game that went four overtimes long. Almost a five-hour game. I don't know if this game is going to take as long, but it should be as competitive as that Texas Wesleyan versus Our Lady of the Lake game. Yes, sir. Five and a half hours. Coach was so hoarse at the post-game interview, he almost coughed <laughs> up a whole ball of anger, if you will, and they won. So I can understand the longevity <laughs> it would be, uh, take for those type of games. But no, I don't think we're going to be here for five hours for this game. But it is going to be hard fought on this gridiron. This game that we're alluding to is the Steers of Texas College hitting the road from Tyler, Texas down Interstate 69 or Highway 59, whichever one they call it now, who knows, going against the hosting Stallions of North American University. Both of these teams going into this matchup with 0-2 conference records, 0-4 overall. So a lot of pride on the line as one team is going to leave Spartan Stadium here in Stafford tonight with their first conference win and first overall win of the season. Yes, sir. There's a lot of anticipation on both sides. Last night I had a good chance to talk with a few players from Texas College. They are very anxious in competing with North American. Now, needless to say, there's been quite a few students that's transferred from Texas College to North American, from North American to Texas College. Some in other venues, not just in football, but just regular classmates. But the love is lost. You know, they used to say there's no love lost. <laughs> It's but the polar the love, opposite. The love is lost, definitely. I think if we had had a conversation or got these teams together last week, it would have been a great celebration, possibly even another ranking on that Texas party school situation. <laughs> but uh, this weekend, it, it's been some hard looks and some uh, you get your own door at 7-Eleven, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, thankfully, some 7-Elevens have automatic doors. And speaking of automatic, this is our East Texas Benefits Countdown to Kickoff. Proud sponsor of the Antler Sports Network. Find them online at EastTexasBenefits.com for any business or personal insurance solutions. East Texas Benefits, local knowledge you can trust. On the pregame, we have a chance to hear from the birthday boy, the head coach of the Texas College Steers, Coach Jarrell Jackson. We'll also look at the highlights from last night's broadcast over on ASN1 as the Cayuga Wildcats defend at Scarborough Stadium in a big-time homecoming rivalry win against their FM59 counterparts and the Crossroads Bobcats. We'll have our game preview as myself and Justin Jackson will discuss our upcoming thoughts leading up to this contest, all that and much more. As the East Texas Benefits Countdown to kickoff, this is Steer Football, brought to you by Yosemite Roofing, your goat of roofing. Nathan LeMaster, I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your Pill Puncher today.
Hi, my name is Anasia Jefferson. My name is Asia Brown. My name is Tashara Johnson. My name is Roosevelt Williams. I serve as the 2023-2024 Miss Texas College. I am the Student Government Association President. I am the current 2023-2024 Miss UNCF. I am the 23-24 National Pay and Analytics President. I am a senior majoring in social work and I'm from Jasper, Texas. I am a senior majoring in criminal justice. I am from Russ, Texas. I am a junior majoring in biology from Montgomery, Alabama. I am a junior majoring in business administration from Houston, Texas. My favorite thing about Texas College is how family oriented the college is. Everyone is somebody. You get to know your professors more on hands-on. You get to know your presidents and vice presidents. Texas College is a tight-knit community. Everyone just welcomed me in, let me know that I was home. When you first step foot onto the campus, someone, a faculty member, a janitor, even a security guard, someone will acknowledge you being here. They're going to ask you different questions because everyone knows familiar faces. The family atmosphere the hands-on experiences you get to have with faculty and staff, and then the multiple organizations that I've been a part of and had the chance to grow at Texas College. The opportunities afforded to me while being able to further my softball career, pledge Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and become one of the campus queens Miss UNCF 2023-24. I've been able to grow here at Texas College mentally, physically, spiritually, and academically because of the opportunities. The motto here at Texas College is give the students light and they will find their way. And attending a college like Texas College, they do give you the life. Coach, not only is this a big conference game looking to get your first conference win on the road against a competitive North American team, but it's also your birthday. What would be the better gift? Uh, say about $5,000 or a win tonight? I win tonight. Uh, come out here, want the guys to play hard. Um, they've been close. We would correct some stuff, uh, but get a win tonight. Be that would be the best birthday gift I can get. So what have you seen on film from the Stallions? Of course, you're going to see them a lot in the near future, so it's best to go in and get this matchup out of the way. So what is it going to take for the Steers to come home with a win tonight? Just play steer football. Uh, play, uh, play like we practice on Wednesday. We had no problems. How good was Wednesday practice? Of course, we see it all over social media. We see the guys putting in work, getting better week to week. What are you seeing that you're liking in terms of improvement from the team? Uh, just getting our guys back from uh, uh, eligibility. As long as those guys start coming back, guys start thriving, um, and we'll be able to put the team together. You know, uh, we got to uh, cut down on the, on the minimal mistakes. Um, it's no, it's no defense that stopped us yet. We stopped ourselves, and you know, same thing on the, on the defense side of the ball. So put it all together and see what happens. I like how you brought that up that no defense has really stopped you because last week you put some together some fantastic offensive drives. Just a couple of little mental mistakes. Looking at that offense, who are some guys we need to look out for? Well, you gotta look out for Hook Finn. You know, hopefully uh, you know, Broderick uh, Brown plays well for us. All of them can all of them can 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 explode at any time. Like I said, we just been a play here, a play there that's just uh, kept us from really exploding. So hopefully we, we, we fix it and get it done. Now finally, it is your birthday. Do you have a birthday cake waiting on you anywhere or no cake yet? Ah, uh, no cake yet. Get the win, and we get the cake after that. What kind of cake? Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry? Ah, uh, chocolate. <laughs> All right. Uh, appreciate your time, Coach. All right.
is Nathan LeMaster. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it in, to the reservoir and there you go folks why make this harder on yourselves save your fingers and get your pill puncher today title we're more than just a title company we're your partners in securing your real estate dreams right in the heart of downtown Athens our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process when you found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step that's where we come in we've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas and we treat every single one of them like family whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer your trust is our commitment we're Tinsley title your partner every step of the way
Both teams have come onto the field, and we are moments away from kickoff as the Texas College Steers take on the Stallions of North American University. This presentation of Texas College Steer Football is brought to you by Yosemite Roofing, proud sponsor of the Antler Sports Network. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson here with you for tonight's game. Both teams looking to get their first both conference and non-conference win. Both the Steers and Stallions entering tonight's game with an overall record of 0-4 and, and conference record of 0-2. As the National Anthem plays, we'll get ready to introduce our starters for this game. The Steers in their visiting whites. White tops, purple bottoms, the traditional Texas College matte purple helmets, the hosting at Stallions of North American University, and their home navy blues, white bottoms, silver piping along the uniforms, both tops and bottoms with a navy pipe along the side of the pants, and the all white with navy piping and a U Stallion helmet as the side logo. Justin, I like to say, NAU has some very slick, a snot uniforms. That navy, white, and gray, perfect combination. Yes, sir. That's an all-American, North American feel, if you will. National Anthem has concluded, and we are moments away from kickoff here from Spartan Stadium. We'd like to welcome you all to ASN2 for this broadcast of college football. And those tuning in back in Tyler in the Rose City over at Caribbean Kitchen, we'd like to thank Ms. Jennifer Blake for hosting the broadcast at the fantastic Caribbean Kitchen. Be sure to go to Caribbean Kitchen on Sundays for brunch. They have their chicken and waffle specials. Be sure to look for them across all Antler Sports Network social media platforms. The captains are stepping onto the field, starting with the captains for Texas College and those visiting whites. The captains are number four, Arnold Young, and the starting quarterback, number nine, Broderick Brown. Now, Brown taking the head signal caller spot for this game as Former starting quarterback and Princeton High School graduate Isaiah Sadler is currently in concussion protocol, sources told the ASN earlier today. For North American, the captains for the Stallions are going to be number zero, DeAndre Hannott, number 16, that's to Carlos Johnson, and also number five, Colby Clark. Clark, the 5'11", 195-pound wide receiver, as are spoke to the officials before tonight's contest, and they were excited for tonight's broadcast. Head referee is Kenny Cleric, as it seems that North American will elect to receive the opening toss. Now, Justin, as we talked about during the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff, there's a lot at stake for both of these teams, not just on the field, but maybe a little bit of bad blood off the field as well. Definitely. So, as you was noticing, um, I, I spoke with uh, De as you brought his name up, Deodric Hadnot. Hadnot uh, is the heart of this team he's a senior leader on the squad um he will be probably coming back for his last year of eligibility but they really do not want to lose against texas college it's not that they don't like them they like these guys they already feel like it's a bunch of their own brothers on the other side of the field but the point going home with a goose egg is not going to make them happy this week especially at this point of the season at this time it's pretty much right smack dab in the middle of the mid-season mark you don't want to go into that point in time, no matter what you have in terms of aspirations, whether that be conference championship or not. You don't want to go into that midway point with a goose egg, Justin, as you said. So the Steers looking to tee things off, doing the kicking honors for Texas College is going to be number 85 for the Steers. That's Tyreek Hastings. Hastings last week against the Lions of Langston. Did a very great job kicking. One thing I noticed about him, he's gotten a lot better as the season goes on. Right-legged kicker. Ball is seen up on the 35, and we have game time here. Short kick, not a lot of distance. Straight pop-up is going to be hauled in at around the 35-yard line. Doing the kickoff return is going to be Laquavian Jackson. Jackson might have gained about two or so yards, and we got us a quick pile-up. And now the Stallions will take over first and 10. While we have this moment to check out the Stallions for the very first time on the Antler Sports Network, let's take a look at this Stallion offense. Now, Justin, you know the Stallion team better than almost anybody. Who do we need to look out for? On the Stallions, you got you to gotta always keep your eyes on this quarterback of ours. Um, he's got a lot of good accuracy. Some of his decision making is, is, is seems to have been his problem and his patience in the pocket. He gets a little happy feet, you know what I mean? He'll, he'll try to get out of there, and he's not the best scrambler. 
Also, number zero had not. When he gets the ball, he's looking to hit everybody, everything that's moving in his way to get to the end zone. First play from scrimmage is going to be handoff to Reeves. Reeves might gain about four, gets knocked out of bounds, and the steer defense already showing a little bit of extra fire. That gain of four is going to make it second down, and it's six to go. In a moment, we'll take a look at the Texas College defense. On the tackle on that last hit was the defensive end for the Steers, number 93, Tylen Lewis. Lewis is an Iron Man, plays on the offensive and defensive line. Ball is now on the 48-yard line. Four receivers out wide for the Stallions. Both of them stacked up to both sides of the formation. Steers looking to rush four, man in motion. That's Nathaniel Green now going over. And it looks like the stoppage of play. And the play clock hit zero, and we have our first flag. That's a delay a game penalty called against the Stallions. And, Justin, that's not how you want to start your first offensive drive. No, that is not how you want to start your offensive drive. But I will say this. Both teams are very much used to beginning the game in moments and segments of, of adversity, especially with unwanted penalties. So we will be able to see them both bounce back from these type of things. It's just getting the butterflies, cobwebs out, if you will. The penalty game, of course, a big point of concern amongst some NAIA schools. As we have yet another stoppage of play, and it looks like NAU was going to call their first time out of the game, and we'll take it with them. We're already scoreless, and it seems like the Stallions have a little something to talk over, and as they talk things over, we'll take a short break. Back in 30 seconds, this is College Football presented by Yosemite Roofing. Back after the timeout, the Stallions wanted to talk things over, led by head coach Kenneth Apondi. And, of course, the Steers led by head coach Jarrell Jackson. We had a fantastic opportunity to speak with him before the game, and it's also his birthday. So, of course, he would love his Steers to get a nice little birthday present. Yes, sir. He said he'd rather have a win over $5,000. Let's see how that turns out. It's a handoff to Hatnot. Hatnot turns the corner. Might have gained a yard, and he does no make that two. That gain of two was going to make it third down and nine right at the 45-yard line. And it seems that the Steers that pretty much has the flats locked down early on this first offensive possession for NAU. Yes, sir. You can see those defensive ends already pointing and popping out. They're still being blocked, but they're already calling out the play. Communications is up over there, and of course, we always like to call out Steven Ajibola with sealing off the offensive linemen so the defensive backers could get up there and make the play. Ajibola is a, the main, is the spear of the sword for this tier defense. Ajibola gets a hit on the quarterback, passes incomplete. Definitely gets a, a rush on that. Made the quarterback hurry up and throw that ball. As we take a look at our Circle M Crawfish replay, see Aji Bola right there on that outside, getting to the quarterback early, forcing the incompletion. And now it's going to be fourth down and nine. Look, now it's already going to be four and out. You took the time out. You had the delay a game. You might have had a positive, net positive amount of yardage of maybe one yard for the Stallions. You don't want to stall out on your opening possession. And if you're Texas College, this is your time to capitalize. You don't want to go empty as well. Don't want to start off the game with zero points on the board. High snap, it's blocked! Texas College is gonna go the other way! Into the end zone, touchdown, Steers! What a way to start things off! 43 yard touchdown return! Fantastic job by Jalen Jackson! Jackson gets the scoring early for Texas College off the block punt, and we have ourselves an early contender for a top 10 play of the month, Justin. What a heads up play from Jackson. Just putting the pressure on the punter and not giving up. Sometimes you get your line, you might see the punter go through his motions and slow up. He didn't. He kept his head down, put his hands out, laid out flat, and he actually landed on his feet for a great return. Finished the play with a touchdown. That's hard working from my alma mater right there. Hastings 
Here for the PAT Honors, Honors Hook Finn will hold for the Steers. High snap. And we got another block, but this one won't get returned. Barely reaches the goalpost, but the Steers are reeling. After the 43-yard punt block return for six, we got ourselves a ball game. It's 6-0. Texas College ahead. Back in one minute, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Yosemite Roofing. Your East Texas Goat of Roofing. Here's the kickoff from Hastings after the Jackson return. Going the other way are the Stallions, and going up the middle is Hogan. Hogan breaks a couple of tackles and a little bit of extracurricular after the play. Thankfully, no flags come out. And, Justin, this is what you talked about prior to kickoff. A little bit chippy, a little bit of bad blood, but no love lost or the opposite, as you said during pregame, if I remember correctly. Yes, sir. No love lost. No love left on the field it's no love anymore no love gain lost bought <laughs> shipped in via amazon anywhere and you can see why it's already been a pretty intense game the stallions on their first offensive drive forced a punt of course that block punt resulted in the 43 yard block return for a touchdown from jackson as now Corkalalin and company will get things going for the Stallions. Shotgun snap, handoff intended for Hatnot. It's on the ground. Hatnot seemed to have gotten right back on it as we take another look at that play via our Circle M Catfish instant replay. Hatnot did a great job of falling back on the football and only going to have to deal with a loss of about four. That could have been bad news for the Stallions. Second and five. Check that. That's second and 15. Court Kalalin in the gun yet again. Had not the back. One receiver in the slot. Four out wide total. Court Kalalin looks out. Has had not. It's incomplete. Well, check that. It was behind the line of scrimmage. So it would be a, a fumble. But had not falls back on it again. And now that makes it a short loss. That's back to back. Plays with a lost yardage for North American with 11.53 remaining in the first. And now the Stallions will huddle back up and try to find the best way to attack this Texas College defense because so far they've been firing on all cylinders, pretty much in all facets. Can't really say offense, though, because we haven't seen the offense step onto the field. It's third and 13. Cork Leyland in the gun. Four receivers out wide again. That's had not to his right. Takes a shotgun snap. Drops back. Looking to his right. And Algie Bola hits it. The ball is loose. The stairs fall on it. They got it again. Back-to-back -back turnovers forced for the Steers. First one on special teams. This time on the defensive end. And guess who it is, Justin? That's Steven Algie Bola on the hit as we take another look via our circle m crawfish instant replay and now we might have a good chance to see the steers on offense great way to start yes sir great way to start I, we already knew steven ajibola he's the problem somebody you have to get two and three guys on ajibola last season during the broadcast of steer football on the antler sports network was a main figurehead of the defense Guess what? The more things change, the more they stay the same. The Steers now led by Broderick Brown. Takes the first snap of the drive. They get it outside to Cooper. Cooper along the numbers gets hit almost immediately and lost some yards. He might have lost about four. The initial hit for the Stallions was made by number 12. That's Kenneth Berry Jr., the 5'11", 170-pound defensive back. On the hit now brings up second down and about 14 to go after the loss.
Here's the second down play. Brown rolls out to his left. Multiple flags thrown. He gets dropped at about the 45-yard line, and that's another big loss. Looks like this is going to be a defense-heavy affair as now the Stallions of North American University making some defensive plays of their own with 11.06 remaining. As we await the call down on the field by our head official, Kenny Kalerick, he was excited to be here for this game. Two scrappy teams looking for their first win as he calls a holding against the Steers. Kalerick said that games like this are always the most fun. It's just pretty unpredictable as we've seen already Kalerick's words ringing true. It's going to be third down and 20 to go. After the penalty and the Drop behind the line from Brown. Brown throws it across the middle to Hookfin. Hookfin turns the corner. He's along the numbers. Almost gets hit, but gets pushed out of bounds yet again. And he might have gained a pretty solid pickup. That's going to be a gain of about 18. And now that makes it fourth and short. And you're pretty much in no man's land. This screams go for it, especially with the intensity that you've had. That was on the catch again was Terrell Hookfin for the Steers. Second tackle of the game now for the Stallions. Kenneth Barry, the cornerback. As Brown now, fourth down, a lot of movement up front. As we go down to Kalerick for the call again. Fall start penalty called against the Steers, and that'll make this fourth down just a tad bit harder. And this is the main thing the Steers have to fight. They have to not only maintain the big plays, but don't go back on them due to Due to penalties, we've crossed the 10 and a half minute mark in quarter number one. It's fourth down and seven to go. Balls on the 32 yard line. Brown puts a man in motion, takes a snap, looking right, strike across the field. It's intended for Cooper, it's incomplete. And that'll be a turnover on downs. The steer defense is going to have to. Get a big time stop here on this next drive as a stop could result in pretty solid field position after the pass intended for Cooper was incomplete. Stallions will take back over, first down and 10. They've been unable to get too many yards on offense. They had a four and out their first possession that was blocked and sent to the end zone for a touchdown. The Steers, however, missed the point after attempt. Ironically, that was blocked. And then Aji Bola forcing the fumble by Corkalalin. Corkalalin now takes the shotgun snap. It's a pitch and catch across the middle. It was across the outside to Reeves. Reeves steps across the midfield, gets knocked out of bounds at about the 40, and that'll move the chains. That's the offensive firepower that North American needs to see as on the tackle for the Steers was going to be number 23, Jalen Smith. Smith with his second tackle of the game as we have an official timeout for injury. We have an injured steer down, and we'll take that timeout with him. Texas College up 6-0, but the Stallion is moving down the field with 9.49 remaining. Back after this, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Yosemite Roofing. After the injury, the injured steer gets walked off the field under his own power. That's Jalen Smith. Smith already has two tackles in this game. So if you're the steer defense, you hate to lose such an important asset this early in the game. 9.49 remaining. The Stallions took a timeout in the first quarter that will earlier in this quarter, thus leaving them with two. The steers have all three of their timeouts. Defensive shift over here by the steers. They completely went opposite. Ajibol is on the left-hand side, number 44, our left linebacker sneaking off to the right. It's a handoff right up the middle, and it is blown up pretty much as soon as the ball gets touched. On the hit for the Steers, that's number 28. We don't have a number form, but the handoff was given from Corkalalin up the middle to Aileon Hogan, and Hogan pretty much gets thrashed 
Before he can even get a pretty good hand on the ball, that brings up second and long for NAU. Official spot makes it second down and 14 to go. Tell you, the defense saw something in there early. But you could see Rudy stepping out, yelling at him, and they made an immediate shift. Corkaleylan puts a man in motion. Ball given outside to Colin Clark. Clark up the middle, gets brought down. He'll move the chains as another big play by NAU to extend the drive. As soon as the Steers think they have him on the ropes, on defense, the Stallions find a way to make it happen as we take another look with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay. Justin, this is the these are the opportunities that the Stallions wanted in their first drive, but like they say, no better time than the present. No better time than the present. And I like Coach Apande's move, having some faith in his flankers, actually bringing it in the round. That's the second time they've tried that this game. Especially going up against the speed that the Steers possess, especially on that outside. Yes, sir. Man in motion. Corkaleland has two backs. They get it off to Hatnot. Hatnot, multiple flags thrown. He gets hit, but it gains another extra yard or so. But now we just currently await what the flag could be as a helmet comes off, so a stallion will have to take off a play. That was Deontay Hill. Oh, I'm so sorry. Leon Hogan on the run there, number 11. Him and Hadnot are about the same height, and they literally are the kind of the same guy to the, to the guys on the field. They're both the big brothers of the team, if you will. Penalty called against the Steers. That'll move the chains yet again and give NAU first down in 10. Eight minutes and four seconds Remaining at quarter number one, same set as the previous play. Cork Kalalin in the gun with two bags. One receiver in the slot, two on the short side of the field, one on the far side at the top of your screen. Hand off to Hatnot. Hatnot turns the corner, gets to about the 20, reaches out. But no, he's going to lose a pretty big amount. He's going to lose about five. That brings up second and long. Second down in 15 after the Hatnot loss of five. 7.47 remaining, and now it seems like NAU was slowing things down on offense, taking their time, trying to see what the steer defense can deliver. They've already forced a special teams turnover, which resulted in six, and IG Bola has already forced a fumble. Steers looking now again to rush for. IG Bola back on that left side. It's been a couple places he's been over. Fake handoff now up the middle to Hadnot yet again, and Hadnot's only going to gain about three. Not the biggest gain in the world, but at the end of the day, any yardage counts, especially when your offense has been struggling to get the ball rolling, so to speak. As we get ready to hit the seven-minute mark, couple quick substitutions. And now there's a pretty big third down, especially this deep end of steer territory for the Stallions. Got three... Trips right, if you will, for NAU. This is kind of their trademark play. Thrown out, out of bounds. As I was about to say, they usually run a screen out of this formation, and they've been finding some success with this. But this time, no connection made. That misconnection will result in a fourth down, and looks like it could be field goal time for the Stallions. This will be a pretty long kick. Well, not too long of a kick. 35 yards out with a six and a half. A couple, couple here is over six and a half minutes remaining in this game. Play clock is sitting at 19. Rolling snap. Not going to get the block this time. Kick is up through the uprights and good. And the Stallions strike on offense. After the successful kick from Cristobal Salgado, we got ourselves a game. After the Steers capitalize on a special teams opportunity, the Stallions respond with a field goal. It's 6-3 with 6.29 remaining. Back after this in one minute on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2.
NAU, after the successful field goal, will look to try to capitalize on defense this time. The kickoff is going to be hauled in by Brent Williams. Williams up the middle, has a head of steam at the 30. 35, 40, 45 midfield. One more man to beat. Gets tripped up by the kicker at the 45-yard line. And that's a great way to start on the special teams again. Special teams coordinator for Texas College might be getting a raise after the early start his unit has gone on. 6-17 remaining in the first quarter. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson in the booth with you as we take another look at that return. And it seems like that speed we talked about from the Steers is already playing a big part in this game, not necessarily on the offensive or defensive side of the ball. Speed is speed. When you catch that seam and you see nothing but daylight, you got to get in that hole, and he definitely hit it hard. Shotgun snap taken by Brown. Brown walloped as he throws, and it's caught. Hauled in by Hookfin. First down and 10 steers. That's another big time play as they rush to the line of scrimmage. Brown pretty much needed a picture perfect throw to the far side across the numbers. Hookfin had a fantastic angle on it, keeps the feet in bounds. And now it's first and 10 yet again for Texas College. Here's the snap. Handoff up the middle for Jordan Whitaker. Whitaker rolls and is going to gain a pretty solid amount. Gain of about four right at the 20-yard line, and that will bring up second and six. That tackle was made by the Stallions, number 12, yet again. That's Kenneth Berry, Jr. As now the Steers head back to the line. Handoff up the middle. It's first and goal. As a wise man once said, Justin, after the Whitaker run, the Steers are cooking with Crisco. This offense is on fire and wasting no time. Brown back in the gun, handoff to Whitaker up the middle. Side steps to his right along the hashes, gets hit, but gets a couple more yards and is going to have to settle for about a gain of one. Hit him in the mouth until they fall down. Hit him in the mouth until they fall up. Hit him in the mouth until they get out of the way. I love this offense. Run, run, run. Why not? Why not if it's going to work? Kenneth Barry again on that last tackle for the Stallions. That's his fifth tackle of the game. We've hit five minutes remaining in the first. Brown in the gun. New running back in for the Steers is going to be Keenan Raleigh Banks. Hand off up the middle. No, shoot, check that play action. It's a throw incomplete intended for Cooper as that brings up third and goal. Cooper's got a really... He gets open so much. He's got to learn how to hand, hand on to the ball, break to the ball, create separation. He's really got to do that. I've been Hook. watching this kid for three years. Pre-snap penalty called. False start against the Steers. And that'll make this third and goal just a tad bit more difficult. While we have a moment, let's take another look at that fantastic throw from Brown. Took a Big hit as he let the ball go. The fact that that was, an ac that was as accurate as it was to Cooper is pretty spectacular. And well, check that, excuse me, to Hookfin, that last completion. Cooper was the one who had the pass intended for him from Brown that fell incomplete. And another flag is thrown. Back-to-back -back flags, another false start penalty called against the Steers. And part of me wants to think that penalties like that, especially this close to your own end zone, you just get a bit excited, and in this case, a little too excited. A little too excited and a little less disciplined uh, thinking here. we got to keep our discipline high, not on the lesser end. I'm trying to be nice about it, if you know what I mean. Ball's on the 17-yard line. Cooper's in motion, now moves over to the slot. Brown looking across the middle, almost hauled in, one-handed by Cooper. Is that going to bring up fourth and goal? As we were just saying... Young Mr. Cooper has to learn how to squeeze and hold on to the ball. Because he gets he's pretty much open every single play. It's almost criminal the space he creates on the line. Whether the steers decide to put him in motion or not, Cooper just finds a way to get an open space. But most importantly, doesn't matter how open you get if you don't hang on to the football. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fourth and goal now from the 17. Three minutes, 56 seconds remaining. Banks in it running back. Brown looking, hit as he throws again. He hits Banks. Banks turns up field, makes the juke move, has green, rolls into the end zone. Did he get in? Touchdown, Texas College. The Steers punching it again. What a nice little screen pass out to the flats. Get your running back some running room and run hard, broke a couple tackles. You never know what can happen. And rolls into the end zone. The official kind of took a minute 
to confirm if he was in the end zone or not with 346 remaining on that 13 yard touch no excuse me that 17 yard touchdown carry his Keenan Raleigh Banks Banks is money in the bank and it seems like they're going to try to cash in an extra two points on the conversion man in motion Brown looking fade ball back in the end zone intended for Cooper incomplete no flag thrown but I'm sure the steers will definitely settle for six once again the steers get back onto the board this time not with a special teams play with a run up the middle from Banks we got ourselves a ball game it's 12 to 3 with 3.46 remaining, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Caribbean Kitchen. After the Banks touchdown run and unsuccessful PAT, the Steers will head back on defense and NAU an opportunity to return the kick. With it is Fleming. Fleming turns the corner on the outside, gets pushed out of bounds. A coach falls. Looks like the ball boy falls. As Colby Clark once again setting up NAU with fantastic field position, all thanks to special teams. But the question is, Justin Jackson, can the Stallions convert? I feel like we've said that a lot already, and we only have 337 remaining in quarter number one. That's been our problem all year, scoring points and converting. We have to continue to get first downs. If we just keep grabbing first downs, that'll be the positive spin on it for us. They'll be hungry enough to punch it through for a good end zone. Our ball boy's getting checked out. Got to mention, uh, that ball boy used to be a Texas College wide receiver last year. He's one of our transfer students and sitting out for the NAI uh, play roles. He won't be active till next year, but man, what a what a way to take a hit on the sideline. Took a hit indeed. Coach got to be pretty happy with that. It's first and 10 for the Stallions on the 40. Snap is bobbled. Corkaleland falls on it. The steer's not too far behind, but that'll be a loss of about 11 or 12. Man. It's like one step forward and five steps back. In this case, about a good 15 steps back. Man, it, it, that just le honestly leaves me speechless, guys at home. I, I literally don't know what to say for that. I said it earlier, it's a lack of discipline. This is a lack of concentration. One thing about this Steers team, don't let the record fool you. They can definitely punch you in the mouth if the opportunity allows. Quick pitch to the outside is hauled in by Clark, and Clark gets a level out of bounds. A helmet comes off. That tackle was made by the Steers' Jalen Smith. Smith with his third tackle of the game. He's going to knock on the door of midfield. I was only. I'm glad he grabbed the ball and brought it in, but this guy's got to learn how to get vertical. He's got too much speed, too much strength to be sitting there trying to make a bunch of juke moves after he gets the ball. Get up field. North and south, as they say. You don't want to go east and west. That is going to be a loss of two after the throw from Clark. Corkaleland in the gun yet again. Takes a snap, looking, steps up in the pocket, and is going to use his legs. Across midfield, slides down. Takes a hit. That tackle made by, by Christopher Gibson. As Corkaleland decided to step up in the pocket, great job by the young man using his concentration and getting through. Corkaleland, not a small guy. Mighty stretch of the imagination. 200 pounds. And now that's going to bring up fourth down in 15 for the Stallions and possibly punt time. And indeed it is. Back deep for the Steers. The elusive TJ Hookfin. High snap on the punt. This one isn't going to get returned for a touchdown, at least on a block. As Hookfin tries to haul it in, it takes an NAU bounce, but eventually rolls into the end zone as now the Steers will take back over first and 10. They've had two touchdowns already in this game, Justin, but 
no PATs, but nonetheless, they have the lead with a minute 25 remaining in the first score, reading 12 to 3. Yes, sir. They keep fighting all year long. And this shows why you should not give up during your season because you'll have a game where everything starts to roll and starts to click and starts to falling in place. It's a good showing so far for the first quarter by the Steers. Great showing indeed as we follow their journey on the here on the Antler Sports Network, broadcasting all of their home games. And I can honestly say, at least from a broadcaster's perspective, this Steers team has made a very great jump, not only in games like this where they're close or even going their way, but even when they're down, it seems to flag a lot of movement up front. I wouldn't be surprised if they threw a flag on everybody at this point. A lot of movement, a lot of pointing. I even think one of the trainers on the NAU side got pointed at like it was her fault. You never know. The, the discipline seems to be failing on both sides of the ball today. Fall start penalty called against the Steers. That'll push him back a good chunk of yards. And you know, it could be butterflies. This is turning into a small little rivalry game, so it, it could be butterflies. I-59-69 kick, kickoff shootout. I don't know. We're still working on that. We'll figure it out to have. How's that? Here's Brown. Brown hit again. Has Hook Fennel on the sideline. Is hauled in, but he gets hit. Incomplete pass. Fantastic coverage downfield for the Stallions. That, that's Oda Bonner. Bonner, 5'10". 205 pound listed as a linebacker but I don't think a linebacker should be moving like that in deep coverage he did a great job staying with Hookfin step for step and Hookfin's a spring chicken yes he is and very quick so as you're being surprised seeing a linebacker move like that we have to remember this is an AIA and there's a lot of guys on that field playing out of position multiple steers Play both on offensive and defensive line. Just as a note, empty backfield now after the motion. Spin move, cut to the outside. Maybe one more man to beat, but he's immediately met by a, a gaggle of stallions. Can't think of a, or maybe a herd of stallions. That might be a little bit better. DeCarlos Johnson was the first of in Navy and Gray to get to the football. You know, this, this thing is both teams are going to be a herd and a stampede. So we'll see what they get done in the stable. I like that. That was a good one. That was a really good one. That We might be able to somehow find a way to use Stable in the name of this rivalry, but we'll find out later on. 40 seconds remaining at quarter number one, and it seems that the got a battle at the top of the screen here. Looks like one player thought the play started, the other one didn't. Either way, it's going to be a penalty against the Steers, pushing back another five yards. And, Justin, I see you over there. Pointing off to the top of the formation, they're absolutely dumbfounded. What did you think went happened? Neither one of those players were looking at the, the 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 center. I don't think they ever had a clue what was going on on the actual line of scrimmage. They were into each other's rivalry. Here's Brown. Brown with 30 seconds left. Takes a massive hit. Gets hit out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. A little bit of chirping and talking along the sideline. Initial hit by the Stallions made by Chris Randall, number 29, as a helmet of a steer pops off, that's the quarterback, Broderick Brown, and he's going to have to sit out of play. And this is interesting now. The quarterback comes out, but you can't go for it. Definitely can't go for it. At least I wouldn't go for it. I mean, I'm not a coach. I wear a broadcaster's headset and not a coach's headset. But now the steers face fourth and eight as Brown will sit out after the helmet comes off on the sideline. And Justin, as you talked about, it yeah, looks like they will punt. That's DeAndre Hill doing the kicking honors. Horn sounds. The Steers let the clock roll. That is the end of quarter number one. We have ourselves a pretty interesting game. After one quarter of play, the Steers 12, the Stallions 3. Back in one minute, this is Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2.
after the conclusion of quarter number one, we're set to go for quarter number two. Fresh 15 is on the clock here at Spartan Stadium in Stafford, Texas. That's a kickoff from Hill. Pretty solid kick. Not a lot of movement, but plenty of height. Takes a steer bounce and at about the 44-yard line and moves up a yard. Now the Stallions take pretty solid field position, first and 10, knocking on the door of steer territory. Now, Justin, as I said earlier, nobody knows this Stallion team better than you. Of course, you're the sports information director over at NAU, but you have experience with Texas College as well. What would you like to see change from the Stallions as they take on this next offensive drive? I'd like to see a little bit more confidence, one. It seems like there's, they're always checking back to the sideline to see if they're doing it right. It's time to play the game, guys. Quit playing the sport and play the game. Well, as they say, don't hate the player, hate the game. How's that for a good old-fashioned shrub for you? Four minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Shotgun snap. Handoff. Up the middle, turning across field is Clark. Clark is going to get a pretty good gain of about six, and that'll make it second down and four after the carry. On the tackle for the Steers was going to be number 30, Dylan Dubois. As Dubois gets his first tackle of the game, and there it is again, the linebacker, but this time almost like a pseudo-defensive end. The Steers doing a great job of disguising their defensive fronts, keeping the Stallion offense on their toes as the drive transpires. After the game, it's going to be second down and four after the Clark carry. And the gun is Corkalalin again. He has a back to his right. They're going to hand it off to him. That new back is going to be Bryce Julian. Julian up the middle, crosses the plane. That's going to be a gain of six. And they move the chains again as the Stallion horse nays over the PA system here at Spartan Stadium. That tackle mate for the Steers was number 40, Broderick Brown. As now it's first and 10, fresh set of downs with 13 minutes and 47 seconds. Clock still rolling. 12-3, your score. The Steers getting a 13-yard touchdown run and a blocked punt return for a touchdown to get their points. NAU going for a field goal on their last offensive possession. Handoff to the outside is Clark. Clark looking and isn't going to get very far. He cut back across the middle, but waiting on him was the Steers' number 20, Tyler Mitchell. And it looks like we have an injured stallion down, and as he gets treated to, we'll take a short break. Back after this, it's 12-3, it's to 3, the second quarter with 13-22. This is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network. My name is Asia Brown. My name is Tashawn Johnson. And my name is Roosevelt Williams. I serve as the 2023-2024 Miss Texas College. I am the Student Government Association President. I am the current 2023-2024 Miss UNCF. I am the 23-24 National Pay and Analytics President. I am a senior majoring in social work and I'm from Jasper, Texas. I am a senior majoring in criminal justice. I am from Russ, Texas. I am a junior majoring in biology from Montgomery, Alabama. I am a junior majoring in business administration from Houston, Texas. My favorite thing about Texas College is how family oriented. After Clark gets escorted off of the field, he seems to be okay. If you're the Stallions, you definitely want him back on the field as quickly as possible. NAU now faces Second down and 14 to go. Balls are at the 47-yard line. Corkalayan puts a man in motion. That was a slot receiver. Now looks for him. It's hauled in. No, it's incomplete. That pass was intended for the Stallions' number 18, Kawan Palm. Palm, the 5'9", 175-pound receiver. Looks like he had it, but also looked like he tried to catch, will turn and run before he could fully grasp the football. And that's the same thing, Justin, you talked about with Cooper, the steer receiver. Yes, sir. I think his uh, ears were working a little too well. He was he hearing all kinds of footsteps, including his own. How's that R&B song, The Footsteps in the Dark? 
In this case, the footsteps under the lights. After the incompletion, 13.02 remaining. It's third and 14 from the 47. Corkaleyland looking, taking a shot down. Fields got a man, and it's no one's at hold it or picked off. We're going to have an instant replay. The steers come up with the football, no, no, but no, 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 they no. say NAU has the ball. Wow. As we take another look at it here with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay, Corko Lane with a 50-50 ball if I've ever seen it. Going up for it, going up top, hauls it in. About as tall as the Houston skyline, and that'll move the chains first and 10. We got ourselves another contender for play of the night. Pass hauled in by Jason Reeves. As now it looks like we have ourselves a stoppage of play. They're going to say the pass was incomplete. As we're going to, they trot back, we're going to take another look and try to slope things down at the point of the catch and try to see. I don't think a foot got in bounds. Ah. That's definitely an interesting call. We saw a lot of rough calls or difficult calls to try to make in our Friday night football broadcast last night as the KU go Wildcats and the Crossroads Bobcats took it, took on one another in the battle of FM 59 but after the incompletion it's fourth and 14 and it's punt time ball sword almost blocked yet again it is a pretty darn good punt it's going to be hauled down by Hookfin Hookfin starting at the five Turns the corner, beats the man at the 20. 25 gets a fantastic block, and the flag comes out. As this flag gets discussed by the officials, we're going to take another look at that last play, that 50-50 ball. Corka Leyland, kudos to him. That was a pretty great throw. But even better job by Reeves, pretty much switching positions there with the steer defender going from a receiver to a defensive back that was almost an interception yes sir i do i do like the 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 hard competition level and the the 1v1 setup if you will by the db and the wide receiver they both playing it all out I, you got to appreciate that holding penalty called against the steers and i'll make this first down just a tad bit more difficult as now Texas College will take over first and 10 from the 17-yard line. 12 minutes, 23 seconds remaining in quarter number two. Referee instructs the clock to roll. Brown in the gun. Handoff to the outside, turning around the back corner, but isn't going to get very far. That's Jordan Whitaker. Tackle is going to be made by a herd of, st of stallions. How about that? As we try to get a read on the number of so we can salute who made the tackle on the bring down was number 29. That's Chris Randell. Randell, his first tackle of the game, and a big tackle indeed. That's going to make it another big, well, they're going to say no gain. I thought he, at least from this angle, that he lost a yard. But they're going to make it second down and 15. 11.47 and ticking remaining. Empty backfield now for Brown. Brown winds up, throws, risky play is incomplete. That pass was intended for the Steers, Jalen Jackson, but in coverage for the Stallions is Kyrese Massey, the 6'4", 193-pound defensive back. And that's a big target to try to get a throw in over, especially a throw of that magnitude, and now that makes it a pretty difficult third down and 15. The Steers' backs are against the wall, but they're up 12-3, to 11 minutes and 41 seconds to play in half number one after the incompletion. Brown now has a back along with four receivers. He drops back, looking to his right. Hard strike over to Cooper. Cooper hauls it in, and a big-time hit. Maybe a little bit of extra chatter after the completion to Cooper. On the big hit was Bonner yet again. As Cooper, fantastic catch across the middle. Great concentration to hang on to the football, most importantly. A lesser wide receiver. Might have even dropped that. A result of the completion is going to make it fourth down and four. Good number. Good number. Bonner. That was Bonner on the hit. Sitting at fourth and four. Brown in the gun. 
looking, and it looks like we're going to have a maybe even a timeout called by the Steers, and that is indeed what we have. As the Steers will take their first timeout of the game, we'll take it with them back after this short break in 30 seconds. It's Steer Football on ASN2. The Steers face, face fourth and four after the timeout. Coach Jackson and company looking to talk things over. Coach Jackson, it's his birthday today. We spoke with him during the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff. With 10.53 remaining in the half, be sure to stay with us for our HTO halftime refresh. As we'll hear from our head writer, Nick Jordan. And it seems like NAU is going to take a timeout. Looking to try to get a couple of substitutions, but couldn't get the players off the field or on the field in time as they take a timeout I guess we'll take another timeout with them back in 30 more seconds this is Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2 name of the business mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo yo Yosemite? Yosemite? Yosemite roofing. Or Yos... Yosemite? Yosemite roofing? Yose. Yosemite. Yose it's a quick snap. Play gets stopped. Well, no, I... I Justin, there are very few times in my broadcast career that I've been left absolutely speechless. This is... One of those times, and maybe NAU had tried to get another substitution in, but the officials did indeed stop play before the punt was made by Hill. Right now is a bunch of disappointed parents from NAU. They know more about what's going on and not going on the field right now than the players. Just a little bit of confusion with the personnel, I think. Well, it looks like we're ready to... Try it again. Back deep for the Stallions is going to be Hogan as Hill. Very great kick. That's a booming kick. Hogan breaks off two tackles. Crossing midfield and has space at the 45. Gets bumped at about the 43. And a flag, and this might be a late hit. Right along the steer sideline, we've seen a lot of tension already in the early goings of this game. And as the Stallions take over first and 10, it's only seeming to get higher and higher in terms of the tension. On the tackle there for the Steers was number 52, now Sincere, Sincere Mullen, number 11, Hogan on the return. Is a late hit penalty called against the Steers, and that'll make this first down just a tad bit sweeter for head coach Kenneth Apondi in company. Both teams in the Sooner Athletic Conference. However, the Stallions of North American, the newest members of the Sooner Athletic Conference. Both teams sitting with a similar record of 0-4 overall, 0-2 in conference. Sears looking to send a heat. On the shotgun snap is Corkaleland. Corkaleland spins off into the, after the handoff. They say the ball came loose. The Steers say they have it. It's waiting on the official word. The pile... Slowly starts to, to disperse. It seems like NAU collects the football. No turnover, but also no gain. Second and 10, and a big sigh of relief with 10-15 remaining in the second quarter by the Stallion faithful. Second and 10. Corka Leyland in the I form. Takes the shotgun snap. Looks like it was an intended handout, but a miscommunication. Sired on throw incomplete. Plenty of steer defenders in the backfield, just a couple of them. It was number 30, Dylan Dubois, yet again, and also number 45, the linebacker, Christopher Gibson, as both of those steers gave Corkaleland little to no time. It seems like it, that play was supposed to be a handoff to Hadnot, but Hadnot went out to block instead of awaiting the pitch. 
With 9.56 remaining, play clock is sitting at 17. That's a definitely broken play. Had not took off. He completely had no idea what play was going on right, right there. You know, I'm not a, I always say this, I'm not a betting man, but I would say that whatever team plays the more disciplined game, not necessarily the more flashy game, is going to come out with a win and exhibit A. As we have a pre-snap penalty, a false start is going to be called against the Stallions and push them back a couple of more yards. This is the typical North American Texas college exposure that you get at one of their games. A lot of talent on the field, a lot of big plays, and a lot of penalties. Both teams have to work on their discipline. If they need to break out the rule book, I will make personal copies for both teams. I have no problem. 9.56 in quarter number two. Third down and 15 to go after the false start penalty. The Steers still holding the 12 to 3 lead. Five seconds on the play clock. Court Kalalin looks to the sideline, snaps it with a one second remaining. High pass down the sidelines, got a man complete in the end zone. Touchdown, Stallions. Oh my goodness, what a play! Big Reeves, number nine, is a huge target, very fast and very sure-handed. I'm glad he came down with the catch on that one for a stallion touchdown. Corcolalin put it on a platter, and Reeves did the rest. Justin, it's like you said, it's big play after big play. And you want to see big plays? We've already got plenty of them. We're not even at halftime yet. Well, 948 remaining in this one. As Salgado looks to put through the PAT. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up through the up. No, they say it's no good wide right. But either way, the Stallions got to be happy with that last play. The 28-yard court, Kalalin snaps it with a one second remaining. High pass. Down the sidelines, got a man complete in the end zone. Touchdown, Stallions. Oh, my goodness, what a play. To nine. We'll take a 30-second timeout back after this. This is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. After the missed PAT, the score is 12 to 9. And NAU looking to kick things back off. Now well within striking distance of the Steers. Line drive kick, pretty good distance. Takes a bounce at the 10. The Steers will haul it in at the 5. Going the other way, whether it's going to be Brett Williams. Williams cuts across the field, still up. Makes another juke, but is only going to gain about 10. Gets to the 15, and that's where the Steers, where the Steers will take over first and 10. And while they switch possession let's take another look at that looks to the sideline snaps it with a one second remaining high pass down the sidelines got a man complete in the end zone for our top 10 plays of the month and justin it's fair to say this game has already produced multiple contenders yes sir i thought we was about to get a quick breakaway on that that um, kickoff return but stallions got down there and contained very good very good burnt williams on that kickoff return only gained about 15, but it'll bring up first and 10. It's a handoff up the middle, turning across. It's going to be Whitaker. Whitaker driving. A little bit of extra pushing and shoving after the play. He's going to gain five. That tackle was made by North Americans number 33. That's Trevion Brown. Second and four. Handoff this time to the outside. Not going to get the same amount of yardage on the previous play as Whitaker, but I'm assuming he'll settle for three, making it third down and one for the Steers. On the tackle yet again, well, the first tackle to get there was Trevion Brown, number 32. That is already his third tackle of the game. Quick snap, handoff, Whitaker to the outside, pushes through. Check that that last play was a first down. They did give him enough to move the chains. So now that play was on first down, that gain of one 
is going to bring up second down and nine. Brown on the tackle. That's three in a row for him. Whitaker, handoff. He's been the steer workhorse early in this game. He gets spun. That tackle is going to be made by the Stallions, number 11. That's Hogan. And there's a steer slow to get up. The steer slow to get up. It seems to be all right. But he's only going to gain two, making it third down and seven to go. Handoff. Fifth straight run play of the drive. He's going to get no gain as Whitaker. Multiple Stallions on the tackle. That was going to be Brown who got to him first. Eight minutes remaining in quarter number one. It's fourth and four, a big time fourth down after the short game from Whitaker. Very few times we've seen the Steers come up on fourth down this game. The Stallions, even though they're down three with 7.45 remaining, 13 on the play clock, have controlled the majority of the possession. Brown drops back, hit as he throws. It's almost picked off, but it's dropped. And honestly, one would say that's the best case scenario because of inter an interception would have put NAU first and 10 at about the 45, but instead they'll take first and 10 at around the 30. And Justin, this is that athleticism we saw this time showing up for the Stallion defense. Yes, sir. 100%. They're all over the place, flying all over the ball and attacking the point of entrance wherever the play seems to be flowing. Both teams already doing a much better job of tackling this presentation of Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, or ASN2, is brought to you by Yosemite Roofing, proud sponsor of the Antler Sports Network, the GOAT of Roofing. I'd like to thank them for being our flagship sponsor for all Texas College Steer broadcasts. 7.39 after the four and out, NAU will take position, possession back first and 10. Corkalalen takes the shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, looking to his outside, has a man along the flat on the 40. Gets brought down. He's going to not. No, looks like he might have lost a couple of yards. Once again, the Sears say they have the ball, and there's a big push after by IG Bola, but no flag thrown. They're going to give him no gain, and Justin, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I can tell you this. You, there's one guy on the field you don't want to mess with in a Sears uniform. That's Steven Ajibola. You know, I would immediately, as a quarterback, look up, find out where he has lined up, and if our play is going that direction, audible, audible Omaha, baby. Well, the thing is, Ajibola's played on the left and right ends. Steers defense doing a great job of putting him on different sides of the defensive front, giving the Stallion offense different kinds of looks. After the no-gain run, it's second and 10. 6.50 remaining. It's going to be a handoff to Hatnot. Hatnot up the middle is going to gain a... Looks like he might have gotten two yards. Ball will be placed at the 30. And now that brings up third and eight. Pretty much in no man's land for the Stallions. It's decision time. Their kicker is pretty awesome. I can trust him from here. That's Cristobal Salgado, the 5'10", 215-pound kicker. Both plates kicker for the Stallions and Justin you said earlier after he missed that PAT you were very surprised you said he doesn't miss very often here's third and eight 615 remaining four out wide and a back they fake it to Hadnot Kirk Alalen finds a man along the sideline and he's got space 10-5 goal line touchdown NAU 30 yard touchdown pass from Kirk Alalen goes into the end zone hauled in by number nine that's Jason Reeves on the catch. As they call him on campus, Big Reeves again with another sure handed. This time a little dip to the inside and a shake to the outside for a full touchdown. The kid's got some moves. Moves indeed. We've got 6.05 remaining in the first half. We have ourselves some fireworks as NAU takes their first lead of the game. They're up three, looking to expand that lead with the PAT from Salgado. Salgado waits the hole, the snap is good, hold is good, and that one's good through the uprights. This kick is converted, Justin, I can assure you. After the Reeves 28-yard touchdown, we got ourselves a ball game. The Steers lead has dissipated. It's Stallion 16, Steers 12. Back in 30 seconds, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2.
leaves again. He's on the sideline trying to get oxygen, water, a couple of handshakes, some tape, and everything else. I believe the kid is tired. What do you think? Uh, I'd say he's pretty tired, too. After the 28-yard touchdown pass, we're back off and underway here from Spartan Stadium. 6.05 remaining. Hauled in by Williams at about the 10. It has a block if he, if he can turn the corner, and he does at the 40. 45 um, gets bounced out almost at midfield. And almost crossing midfield, that return is going to be good for about 46 yards. Check that, make that 36 yards. As the Steers will take over first down and 10 with prime field position again. It's been a minute since the Steers have gotten into the end zone pretty much since the first quarter. It's been all stallions in quarter number two, Justin. Yes, sir. I want to commend the special teams coach of Texas College. They ain't playing around getting that ball upfield, man. Not at all. Turning the corner, getting great blocks. Now it's up to Brown and the rest of this offensive unit to convert into some points. Brown looking. Has man on the outside. Is Cooper incomplete. Pass was broken up by the Stallions, number 10, Keyshawn Langham, the 5'10", 175-pound DB, seemingly no. Forcing the incompletion, making it second and 10. Hands like gloves, big, giant baseball gloves. He almost caught that. Catcher's mitts, <laughs> yes. if you will. The incompletion brings up second and 10. Ball's right on the 47. The Steers with prime field position now looking to convert. Four out wide and a back. Brown steps up, rolls out to his right, looking, strikes on the run. It's almost picked off again. This time it's Jaheim Evans. Evans was moments away from getting the first pick of the ball game, and the Steers once again let out a huge sigh of relief. I'm seeing the quarterback. He's got a big cannon of an arm on him and not only that he can throw and run and throw on the run these receivers just got to stay ready with him it's kind of like playing basketball with Jason Kidd you better keep your eye on him and keep your hands ready that ball's coming indeed especially with the speed of the NAU secondary it's third and ten Brown drops back looking right throw across the middle and complete that pass was intended for Jalen Jackson Jackson has had sure hands throughout this game this might be his first big drop of the contest. It's fourth and ten, pretty much in no man's land. As soon as I give him a compliment, he throws a thigh ball. And, you know, we, we, we teach basketball, baseball, football. We teach to throw the ball to where you would want to receive the ball. Chest, face, hands up high. Nothing below the belly or the, or the thighs. Hill looking to do the punting honors for the Steers. Wobbled snap, but gets it off. If it can get a good bounce here, and it does. Gets a fantastic bounce. It's rolling. NAU touches the ball. The ball is loose. Did the steers fall on it? I think they did. Big time mishap there by the Stallion Special Teams Unit. As we take another look and we slow it down, seems like there were multiple steers surrounding the ball. Falling on it was Rudy Benavidez. Rudy, as you always say, Justin, he's a man of many talents, a man of many trades, coming up with a big-time play on special teams for the Steers. Yes, sir. Rudy will sing to you, tell you a story, build you a house, draw you a house, and then he'll hit you in the mouth, too. So you got to be careful, Big Rudy. It's first and ten. Ball's on the 11. Brown steps up, gets thrown down behind the line of scrimmage. The sack was made by the Stallions, number 12, Kenneth Barry Jr., blitzing at, from the defensive back position and coming up with the big-time play. That's going to be a loss of six. It's second and 16. And you'd hate to give up the amazing field position if you're this to your offense. You're not going to get it all in one play, but you're definitely not going to get it losing 16. No. Four minutes, 54 seconds remaining in half number one. It's a handoff. Up the middle to Whitaker. Whitaker breaks free. Has a block. Still going. Gets brought down at the three. And that's a gain of 16. Tackle was made by the safety for the Stallions. That's Kyrie's Massey, number four. Stallions rushing back to the line. It's third and short. Bounce out to the outside is Whitaker. Whitaker gets pushed. That push from the Stallions pretty much made a loss of two into a gain of two. And now it's fourth down. The Steers need to get to the two-yard line to make it first and goal. Now they face a fourth and two. 
This could possibly almost be a game-deciding play here, especially in the grand scheme of things. This drive was set up by a Rudy Benavidez kickoff will punt recovery. The Steers took the football at the 11, now sitting at the 6. High snap. Brown, head fakes. They get it to the outside, and he gets flipped. <laughs> Big time hit made by the NAU defense as we take another look at that big hit. Talk about clutch, you need a big stop on third down and that's exactly what you get. On the catch for the Steers was number 84, Rory Bailey, the tight end. We've seen him do a lot of movement on the line but we've also seen him do a lot of blocking. That's the first time he's been targeted in this game. Who's on the tackle? On the tackle for the Steers, and it seems like we have a quick timeout as they're going to try to talk things over. We'll take a timeout with them. Back in 30 seconds, this is Steer Football presented by Yos Yosemite Roofing. On a the name of the business on this sheet. Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, 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 Yosemite? Yosemite? Yosemite Roofing. Or yos, yos me. Yosmite roofing? Yose, Yose might. Yose might. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing. And we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. After the steer timeout, officials seem to be like they're going to re-spot the football. It looks like now we have... That last timeout was an official's timeout. Now this time it looks like the Steers are going to take a timeout. And while they take that timeout, we're going to keep it here. We've seen a plenty of big-time plays already in this one, Justin. If you want highlights, this is the game for you. Take a couple look at some of those big-time plays. It all started in this game. NAU on their first offensive possession. We're, first, we're forced to go four and out, and on that very next offensive drive, it was Steven Ajibola forcing the fumble, giving the football back to the Steers. And it's pretty much just been all offense since. Not to mention, arguably, the biggest play of the game was a Broderick Brown throw along the sideline intended for Hookfin. A little bit of controversy on that, on that catch. One official said it was incomplete. The other said it was an interception, and many of the fans here didn't know what to call it. But the officials ended up giving the pass to Hookfin, and that gives us our current score. With 3.58 remaining in quarter number two, it's the Stallions here at home with 16 and the Steers 12, as both teams are still talking things over. Be sure to tune into the Antler Sports Network on ASN1 next week. We have Thursday night football from the DFW. From Standridge Stadium in Carrollton, Texas, the Trojans of Newman Smith High School will be hosting the Bison of Dallas Sunset. Kickoff from, from Standridge Stadium is going to be at 7 p.m. Central. We'll get things started with our pregame show at 6.30. You can check out all Antler Sports Network broadcasts on our YouTube page and also online at antlersn.com forward slash watch we seem to be good to go the officials were trying to see if the steers were short of the first down they were officially deemed short and nau will take over first and ten corka Leylin on the miscommunication incomplete looks like the possible intended receiver was supposed to be mason polamac but polamac looks like he was supposed to maybe run a wheel route instead ran a go and it's going to be incomplete. Second down and 10. It definitely passes there. I, I don't know what's going on with our quarterback. It, 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 the arm turned into a noodle as he reached back that time. It looked like he was trying to set up for a big-time throw downfield, but then he tried to switch it and maybe sidearm it. Couldn't really. We're not in the head of the quarterback, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for it's sure. second and 10. 3.54 remaining after the incompletion. They're going to hand it off this time up the middle. And a tackle made immediately. And it looks like the clock will stop momentarily. This looks like a timeout might have been called. No, I think the ball might have popped out for a moment. 
as on the tackle for the Steers gets who? It's Steven Ajibola on the hit, but not before a short gain of two. The big man is everywhere tonight. Line it up on the left, the right, line it up in the linebacker position. He's making hits, tackles. He's all over the place. I think I might have seen him in the concession stand line. Definitely saw him looking for some Joel off rice. That sounds pretty good right about now. 3.20, clock still rolling. It's third and long. Korkalalin passes behind the line of scrimmage, but they're going to deem it incomplete. They're going to say it's right at the line of scrimmage. Big sigh of relief there as Korkalalin pretty, had, pretty much had no time to get a throw off. And that'll bring up fourth down. The Steers, no matter how far this punt is, pretty much going to get amazing field position. As now looks like the Stallions are going to have to kick things off from their own end zone. Back deep for the Steers is TJ Hookfin with 314 remaining in the first half. History does not go well for the Stallions in this position. They've had quite a few punts from their own end zone and... Let's just say a good fourth percent of that has been safeties. Here's a snap. This one won't be a safety. And a very off. good kick. Going to be hauled in by Hoofin at the 45. Turns the corner at the 30. Gets pushed out of bounds. Very solid return. Gain of 15 will bring up first and 10 for the Steers. And even though the scoreboard might read otherwise with 304, I would say this game has been all Steers as we have a flag thrown right in front of the officials here at about the 25-yard line. This could be an interesting call. I notice Hookfin loves to run to that sideline. I know he's a strong kid, but he's I mean, very smart by I'm not taking a lot of this, t a lot of this uh, the tackles. I definitely wouldn't want to take a hit. There's a reason I'm up here in the press box and not in pads and helmets. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. 3-0-4. Penalty was called against the Stallions. And that'll make it first down and 10. And it looks like we're just rewinding to the last Texas College Steer drive. Last time they were this far in Stallion territory, they started on the 11-yard line after a forced fumble was picked up by Benavendez after a punt. And now they're going to take over from the 15. Brown looking, strike across the middle, and it's a touchdown, Steers! 15-yard touchdown pass is hauled in by the tight end. Bailey, right in the middle of the end zone. Picture-perfect throw from Brown on the run, and we've seen that pretty much all evening long. Brown using his legs to extend plays and using his arm to get into the end zone. And now Brown of the offense will step back onto the field for the BAT attempt. And it looks like we might have a timeout. Texas College will take a timeout and talk things over. As the Steers discuss, we will discuss during this timeout. Back in 30 seconds, it's Steer Football on ASN2. After the touchdown throw, the Steers looking at the two-point conversion attempt. Last time out taken, I'm assuming, to try to see what could cause Jackson and company could cook up for this two-point conversion. As that last touchdown and all Steer touchdowns were brought to you by HTO, your hometown drink stop. All that was set up pretty much by that last Steer drive. As we look at last time Bailey had the ball was flipped, but look at him go now, learning from his mistakes. A great catch by Bailey and a great throw from Brown. Here's the PAT. Brown faking the throw, looking, gets the ball out. Ball is loose. The steers fall on it, but they're going to say he was down on contact, and a flag is thrown. A couple seconds after the play concluded, after the fumble, looks like the first steer to pick it up was the, looks like it might have been the left guard. Xavier Lewis, number 55, who fell on it. But as the Stallions trot back off of the field, penalty against the Steers is declined. 
the PAT will be no good, but the Steers take the lead back. It's a two-point affair. It's Texas College 18, NAU 16, back in 30 seconds on the Antler Sports Network, NASN2. The name of the business on this sheet. Name the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, oh. Yo, 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 Samite? Yo, Seamite? Yo, Zamite Roofing. Or yo, yo, me. Yo, Smite Roofing? Yo, Zay, yo, Zay Mite. Yo, Zay Mite? Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us as long as you call us. After the Bailey 15-yard touchdown reception, the Steers strike back. Now looking at a two-point lead with three minutes remaining in quarter number two. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson here with you for this presentation of Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing. As the kick is up and away, not a lot of distance. The Stallions will take it at the 25-yard line. And it looks like the officials will mark them down right at about the 27 yard line don't know if he might have taken a knee as we're going to try to get a replay here and try to see what went down don't really see much of what could have resulted either way the stallions get a extra yard or two as a result of the play being called dead Let's take, they'll take the field back on offense, first and 10. Now it's a still a two-point game. At one point, Texas College had it at a two-possession game. And now with an opportunity to march down the length of the field with plenty of time, three minutes, you can put together a pretty good possession here and go to the locker room with some extra points. They've already showed that they have quick striking ability. The Greaves is down here ready to eat up the grass. So let's see if we can get a big pass. Wasn't trying to rhyme, but you know me. Rhyming accidentally. Nothing wrong with that. Ball's on the 26-yard line. Man is, man is in motion. It's a handoff, and the steers are on him immediately. It's going to be a loss of two. First steer to get to the play. I'm going to credit that to Dustin Thomas, number 44, the linebacker. They tried to hand it off over to Palm. Palm was in motion, initially started to play as a slot receiver. Was in motion and ran across Corka Leyland's front took the handoff and took the front of a steer helmet. Very hard hit right there. I'm shocked to see him bounce back so fast, but, you know, college does mean youth, and youth can take a lot. Twelve, two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first half. Corka Leyland with the throw, turns, and complete pass. What should have been a gain of about six is only going to be a gain of three. That pass was hauled in by Colby Clark, number five on the catch. On the tackle and what could have been a possible touchdown saver for the Steers was number 30, Dylan Dubois. Dubois initially got juked out of his shoes, but stayed in the plate, popped right back up and made a big time tackle. Now that'll make it third and eight with a minute 40 remaining. Great hustle and tenacity by Dubois. Staying strong with that play. Minute and a half remaining. Corkalalen looking. Winds up into the flat. Intended for Palm again incomplete. He's and just he's just getting a little bit ahead of himself for trying to lead the receivers. Just a little ahead of himself. He's got to settle mm -hmm. down. He's still got a little bit. Pre-game jitters are still kicking in with, with Corkalalen. After the incompletion, it's four and out punt time yet again for the Stallions. Anthony Shembury to do the punting honors. Back deep for the Steers, the dangerous one. TJ Hookfin. The Steers looking to have prime field position with a big time return from Hookfin. With plenty of time. On the clock to make something happen. Punt gets blocked. NAU has it. They turn the other way. Could they turn this into a first down? They do it. Looking for more. Hookman with a big time hit. Out of bounds. And a flag is thrown. Talk about turning chicken you know what in a chicken salad. The bobble punt snap turned into what could possibly be a first down for NAU. Hookfin making the play-saving hit. 
as the referees now talking things over at the 45-yard line. There was a lot to dissect on I'm that play. I'm saying, could you see who got a hand on that, who may have blocked that? Seems like the first steer to get there. As we're going to try to take another look at the replay to try to see who initially got there. It looks like it might have even fooled our camera guy. But I'm going to credit that block to the steers at number 28. But we don't have a 28 rostered. But a big-time block indeed and a possible momentum shifter. What appeared to be a stalled four-and-out drive for the Stallions could possibly be a fresh set of downs. Prime field position, a minute 18 remaining in the second. Talk about turning your luck around. I need that same luck for the Powerball drawing tonight. Normally, wouldn't that dwell have been downed once it touched the punt team's player's hand? Well, the steer, I would assume if the steers got a hand on it, the ball was aesthetically deemed live. Okay. The Stallions picked the ball up, turned that corner, and got those extra yards as the officials walk back. This could be a penalty against. Personal foul called against NAU. As you can hear, much to the dismay of the Stallion faithful. And we have another personal foul penalty called against the Steers. So this penalty might offset. It's going to be first down in 10. After the flag, wow, that was a lot to dissect. Man, I'm almost not completely sure who will get the football first in 10 because there were two unsportsmanlike penalties called. The, the referee might not working here at Spartan Stadium, so we couldn't get a clear listen as to the result of the play. That's Coach Kenneth Aponde speaking to his Stallion troops along the sideline here to our left. Minute 18 remaining in the first half. Be sure to stay with us for our HGO halftime refresh. We'll hear from our Antler Sports Network head writer, Nick Jordan, in our first edition of Nick's Notes, presented by Tinsley Title. Looks like it'll be first down NAU. So either way, they say second chances are hard and third chances are even harder, but the Stallion's definitely going to have to convert here after the penalty gives them first and 10 from the 28-yard line. Still plenty of time and a timeout in hand. The Steers have two timeouts. The Stallions with one. Four out wide for NAU. Corkalalen takes a snap. Gets pressured, holding flat, comes out. Ball gets on the ground, and they whistle it dead. The ball rolled on the ground for a couple of seconds before the play was whistled dead. As Corka Leyland, pretty much as soon as he took in the snap, was immediately pressured. That was Aji Bola who was double teamed, but he was still dragging two Stallion offensive linemen in route to Corkalalen. And I, it, it leaves you speechless how this man finds a way to be involved in almost every single play for this tier defense. Holding penalty called against NAU, but there's also an intentional grounding call. That penalty will be accepted. That'll make it second down and 20. After the penalty, ball will be placed on the 19-yard line. Had not back in as the sole running back. Minute 10 remaining. The Stallion is pretty much going to have to drive the entire length of the field. Palm the man in motion, moves as a tight end. Shotgun snap. Corkalalen. Looking across the middle, big time play is going to be hauled in by Nathaniel Green, number three. And he's going to get a gain of 11 as we've crossed within a minute. It's going to be third down in my track, or in my eye, it's going to be about third down and nine. And that's where they will mark it, 45 seconds remaining. NAU still has a timeout. 
The Stallions rush back to the line of scrimmage. 18 seconds on the play clock. 30 seconds on the game clock. Shotgun snap. Immediately looks to his right. Pressure incomplete. Almost intercepted. But for the Steers, pretty much almost as soon as the, the ball was snapped was Sincere Mullen. Mullen already has three hurries on this game, and this hurry could be his most important. Brings up another fourth down. This time it's fourth and nine with 29 seconds left as Hookfin goes back deep to receive for the Steers once more. What a great swim move by Mullen to step on the inside, get the offensive lineman to, to start over striding and then a great power swim back to the inside back to the outside these guys are working out there at texas college another great punt coming up steers sending the house very great punt a lot of spin on it takes a nau bounce hook fin will take it at about the 19. check that at the 21. turns doesn't have a block and justin as you said steps out of bounds again that return is going to be good for about seven tackle made by the stallions number five colby clark Kid is smart. Hookfin is very smart. NAU will, well, excuse me, Texas College will take it back over first and 10. They have two timeouts with 15 seconds. This might be two good shots downfield. If that, we've seen that this steer offense has big play written all over them. And if there's any opportunity for a big play, we said it in the first quarter, we're going to say it again, no time like the present, Justin. Air raid offense was curated for big, huge plays. Whitaker breaking through. They keep it on the ground and move the chains first down. So the clock will stop for a moment. Now in nine seconds. But when the chains move, that clock will begin moving yet again. The steer offense rushing back to the line of scrimmage. And it looks like as the clock moves, they will not run another play. That will conclude our first half. We've hit halftime, and offense is the name of the game. After 30 minutes of play, the Steers slight lead up to Texas College 18, North American 16. When we come back, we'll have our HTO halftime refresh. We'll have Nick Snopes with our own Nick Jordan. Justin and I will discuss what we saw in the first half and get you ready for two more quarters of action. It's Yosemite Roofing Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, ASN2 and ASN Radio. It's Nathan LeMaster. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today.
Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you've found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way. As a public address announcer, I get the privilege to see lots of football games at this time of year. Recently, I've been announcing 7th and 8th grade games. So far, I've been disappointed with how athletes at that age act and conduct themselves on the field. In the last weeks, I've seen several targeting calls with blows to the helmet and hitting defenseless players. Personal fouls are on the rise. It's hard to imagine that coaches are teaching these skills, but I've seen fans and some coaches applauding these hits. I've seen a dramatic increase in the face mask penalties, and I'm not just talking about grabbing the face mask to make a tackle, but grabbing the face mask and ripping the helmet off of a player and then throwing it the helmet down. Please, these are 7th and 8th grade players. Teach them the fundamentals of football, how to tackle properly, how to throw, catch, and most of all, have respect for the other team. You may not like them, but show respect to your opponents. I worry about these players as they get older and continue to play and don't learn the real game of football. If they're not taught how the, play, how the game is played, we will continue to see players injured or worse when an official makes a call against them and they attack a referee as we saw several years ago on a high school game on TV. Yes, football is a physical sport and you have to accept the risks of playing, but you shouldn't have to worry about illegal hits and actions that take away from the fun of the game. For Antler Sports Network, this is Nick Jordan. Thanks, Mr. Jordan. You can check out all of Nick's notes online at any time at antlersn.com forward slash news. Nick's notes and the ASN Newswire is presented by Tinsley Title. Let the joy of a new home be brought to you, your family, and your dreams. TinsleyTitle.com located right in the heart of Athens, Texas. We still got plenty of football left to be played, but we'll take another one minute break. This is the HTO halftime refresh for Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, ASN2, and ASN Radio. Back at the half, the Steers hold the 18-16 to 16 advantage here at Spartan Stadium in Stafford, home of the NAU Stallions. This is the HCO Halftime Refresh. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson here in the booth with you for tonight's broadcast. And Justin, you've been doing a great job of keeping up with stats. What are some numbers that jump off the page to you the most? The most jumping off the page right now is Broderick Brown's 69 yards passing. It doesn't seem like a lot, but he's getting he's got two touchdowns off of it. He's six for 17. It's not the best rating, but it's the big play possibility. So his vision is actually key. He's seeing downfield. 
going forward in the third quarter, that's going to be a problem. Quality over quantity, a wise man once said, and that's pretty much explained how Brown's quarterback play has been. You don't expect him. I don't think the rest of the steer offensive, both coaching staff and his offensive teammates, expect him to be the most surgical, dink and dunk accurate quarterback. They expect him to go out there and make big plays as athletic and fast receivers, thus being the hook fins and the coopers of that receiving core. And that's exactly what he's done. And also want to salute the steer running backs, specifically Whitaker. Whitaker, I know you probably have his stats ready and waiting, but Whitaker's done a great job of providing that balance for the steer offense. We expect the passing attack. We expect hook fin and Cooper to connect for big time completions and big time yardage. And they have. But Whitaker's done a great job of getting up field and eating up yards on the ground. Yes, sir. Whitaker being the workhorse on 16 attempts for 139 yards. He's averaging 8.6 yards per carry. Him being, uh, him willing to be the workhorse is actually what's opening up the pass game. Now, a lot of the secondary is looking into the backfield while their receiver is flying down the field on them. And it's that old trademark. Um, we're going to run, we're going to run, and we're going to run until you start sneaking up on us, and we're going to beat you over the top. Using the old Chris Collinsworth comparison, a strong run game sets up play action, and then once you can't beat play action, your defense is up a creek without a raft. And, but it's only a two-point game. We're at the half. Both teams in the locker room. Let's start with the Steers. You're up to a very high-powered game. What is head coach Jarrell Jackson and the rest of his staff saying to the Steers in that locker room right now? First thing he's saying is, Coop, you got to hang on to the ball. <laughs> That's the first thing he's saying. A Coop, Coop is one of those kids that plays hard no matter what. You can yell at him, cuss him out, dog him out, make him run, punish him. He's going to come back to practice the next day like nothing happened. So he's got to use that small memory of his, forget all those bad things, and just hang on to the ball. Because we know he's talented. We've seen it throughout last season and even throughout this season. He's arguably the most consistent target, and we've also seen him on defense make big interceptions as well. Yes. So it's almost, I hate to say it, but there's really no excuse for the way he's played. Not because he's a bad player, because we know he can be so much better, and not only do us in the broadcast booth expect it, but I know his teammates, his coaching staff, and the Steer Faithful expect more from him too. Yeah. It could be some head games with him, though, because naturally he, like you said, is, is a defensive player. Um, when he first came to Texas College, he kind of got pushed over to the quarterback line which gave him more knowledge on how to be, how to run his routes, where he would like to be as a receiver. So it could be in his head right now. Coop just trying to settle in and let let his body be the athlete. You got to let your brain be the athlete, Coop. Definitely. Mental and pretty much just as important as the physical aspect as the clock continues to roll. Now let's switch over to Coach Kenneth Apondi. What is the head coach of the Stallions saying to his stable in the locker room. First thing I think he needs to get with Coach Richardson and decide which running back they're going to make the running back. There's been a lot of running backs I've noticed. I'd yes. love to see how many rushes that North American has. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different players have had at least one rush in this game. Yes, sir. Now you have Kobe Clark. On five rushes, he's got 24 yards. For me, it's not even about the total amount of yards. Yards. It's his average. His average is 4.8. If you look at his season average, it's closer to 4.8. I think that might be the person that they need to start giving the ball to. Hadnot is a leader. Hadnot's going to be a leader on the sideline, on the bus, in the locker room. It doesn't matter where he is. As long as that guy's on your team, you have a voice in the locker room. But you don't always have to beat him up all game. Hadnot can run ball for you a little bit. But now you got, Ele I'm sorry, Elion Hogan, who is used to getting a lot of touches, but now he's out in the passing lanes and not receiving, not grabbing the ball. So we got to decide which running back we're going to depend on so these substitutes will start causing less problems and more of a rhythm. Get your guys in so they can get into the rhythm of the game. Now let's go to the quarterback for NAU, Jesper Korkalalin. Korkalalin has had an up and down game. The deep ball is there. It's just the short stuff and the screen passes and the bubble routes that have seemed to be a struggle for him. He's pretty tall in stature, so I don't want to say it's the fact that this, that the very massive steer defensive line has pretty much interrupted his view. Can't say that at all. It just seems like he's trying to get his, well, not even get his legs up on him, like he's just trying to find that rhythm. Yes, sir. Normally he he's been having problems coming off of the off of the off of the the snap. So coach has been moving them in up and out. Another thing is the quarterback depth chart is pretty deep for NAU. 
So getting this guy the right amount of touches, being used to the actual rhythms, of getting in and out of the game, getting the calls, there's been about four times where he had to just come all the way to the sideline to receive the play. So that's starting to be a problem on their aspect to get him settled in. But the other side of it is big number nine. Big Reeves is hanging onto the ball and is presenting a great target for him. So they might need to start looking over to that chemistry. Reeves has had a fantastic evening receiving the football. He's definitely been the Stallions' most consistent target, both in the short and long passing game. But one thing about Corkaleland that I've noticed, he likes to take that three-step drop back. Once he takes the three-step, that is his rhythm. Yes. I've already noticed that. His best throws have come from that three-step drop back. But when Aji Bull and the rest of the strong steer defensive front gets to him in the backfield, he's forced to take a five, seven, or even just completely roll out. And Brown on the other side for the Steers is a much better scrambler. Yes. So it seems like right now the Steers are forcing NAU to play their offensive game. Yes. More throws yes. out of the pocket, more big time, more risky plays that Brown is acclimated to making. And he's obviously making those plays. So of course, I feel like if Corka Leyland can get back into his rhythm, get in that three-step drop back, get him a couple seconds in the pocket, he can get back to that Corka Leyland we saw halfway through the first quarter. Yes, sir. And I think that's the best plan for them. Get into the pocket. Calm down also. Stay calm in the pocket. These guys are here to hit you. Accept that. <laughs> well... I'm not a genius, but football is about hitting, and we're about our sponsors. Let's give them a chance for a message. When we come back, second half action. This is Steer Football on ASN2, presented by Yosemite Roofing. It's Nathan LeMaster. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you got to do is take the point, put puncture the back, right there. Take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today.
Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you've found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way. Halftime is over. Both teams have come back out of their respective locker rooms, and we're ready for second half football. In Stafford, Texas, home of the Stafford Spartans. Well, one of the homes of the Stafford Spartans. And after receiving the first half kickoff, the Stallions will boot to the Steers. Seems like if the both teams coming out of the locker room, the Stallions had a new quarterback taking snaps, that man being Oscar Ozuna. The 6'3", 215-pounder was taking some snaps from the center for the Stallions. Maybe expect to see him coming out of this first offensive drive of the first of the second half as a fresh 15 is on the board. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson here with you for tonight's game. Tune in to ASN1 on Thursday at 7 o'clock Central for, Thessal, for a special Thursday night at Texas High School football broadcast. It's the Trojans of Newman Smith High School host the Bison of Dallas Sunset. The Stallions ready to kick things back off. The Steers are ready to receive. We're up and away yet again under the lights here at Stafford as the second half begins. Steers corral it at about the five, turns back the other way. Don't want to go that way, and it looks like the Stallions are going to come up with a big-time stop on special teams, pinning the Steers inside the five. Not the best way you want to start your first possession of a half. Could we see who was on the return? Is that number 29 for the? These from my, some of the numbers are kind of awkward to see. NAIA numbers have been a problem this year for every sport, not just football. Especially now with teams changing numbers so much. I'd say on the return, at least from this angle, was number 84, Rory Bailey, the tight end, doing a little bit of extra on special teams. Six seconds have ticked off the clock. It's 14 to 54 reading in the first or well, the third quarter of play. Passes way off. A little bit too much mustard on that one. Intended receiver was DeAndre Hill, and that's only his second target of the game. Usually you would think that Hill's such a tall target, standing out about a solid 6'2", 6'3", 212 pounds. That's a big guy. You want to try to get him in the offense a bit more. Hill also has track speed for a guy that size. I used to watch him play basketball um, preseason on the campus of Texas College, actually with my son William and a couple few of the band members. That kid is a blazing blur of speed. Shotgun snap. Ball way off again. Flag is thrown. Pass was intended for Hookfin. And the Stallion faithful again not happy. A lot of Stallion fans have not had a – very positive day here, have they? No, they haven't. Uh, Texas weather has brought a few blues, if you will, with the Stallions. I'm not a big fan of Texas weather. <laughs> I feel like that's not a very unpopular opinion there as the pass interference called against the Stallions will move the chains and make it first down and 10 for the Steers. But thankfully, football season, that brings cooler temperatures, even though as of right now, we have a temperature reading of about 82 degrees. It was 93 degrees at kickoff. So in about two hours, we've dropped a good 10 degrees. I, I like 82 a lot more than 92. Yes, sir. Especially Here, with the wind chill. Here's the first and 10. Hand off to Whitaker up the middle. He's going to gain one. That tackle was made by the Stallions number 20, number 42, Ed Travius Drayton, the 5'10", 170-pound linebacker, breaking off of his block and getting the tackle on Whitaker. Whitaker, as we described at the half, 
has been a big part of this steer offense. It's provided that balance that Coach Jackson and company needed. Brown has made a lot of passing attempts, only 69 yards as we described at the half, but they've been big. Here's for throw, intended for Hook Finney. He hits him, but he's immediately brought down before he can gain much yardage. That's going to be a gain of three. As the tackle was made by the Stallions, number 13, Jaheim Evans. Evans with his fourth tackle, and the short game is going to bring up a quick third down for the Steers. Looks like they're going to mark it, still waiting for the chain gain to give the official spot. No, they're going to call it first down. They gave him forward progress. Wow, I didn't think they would have given him forward progress and gave him the first down, but Hookfin doing a great job of staying, control, staying in control of the football and control of his legs, keeping him under him, and now with 14 minutes to go, the Steers move the chains. Brown dropping back, has plenty of time, rolls out to his right. No flags, going to tuck it and run. Gets hit, takes a pretty big hit at about the 46-yard line. And will that be enough to move the chains? Yes, that's a gain of 12. Tackle was made by the Stallions, number 17, Chris Williams. Williams with his first tackle of the game. I feel like Brown kind of stopped running towards the end. I, I, need it, I need the young man to go ahead and sprint all the way to the sideline. Protect your future, sir. Protect your future and your team. Get out of bounds. Slide, go down. Take a page out of your receiver, T.J. Hookfin's book. That man never hesitates to get out of bounds. Here's a handoff up to Whitaker on first down. Breaks multiple tackles, gets spun back, but not before he gains eight. Tackle again made by number 13, Jaheim Heavens. That's his second tackle of the drive. And now the Steers picking up the pace a bit. It's second and two after the carry. Check that, make it second and three. They hand it off. Over to Whitaker. Whitaker crosses the line again. That's a gain of six and a first down yet again. The Steers coming out guns blazing. Chris Williams, number 17, on the tackle for NAU. Steers already back to the line. Shotgun snap. Give it to the hot hand of Whitaker. He loses one. A herd of Stallions there on the tackle, but the first one to get there. I would say I think that was number 12, Kenneth Barry Jr., the defensive back. Barry has done a great job of staying in coverage, but also when he's asked to blitz, he gets to the quarterback and into the backfield in pretty much no time flat. No time flat. He's a downfield player. He's, oh, I'm sorry, upfield player. He's always trying to get back there in the backfield to hit the quarterback. Here's second and 11. Brown lets it fly. Flag and a touchdown! Into the end zone! But there is a flag. And my guess is it's going to be on Texas College as Christopher Norman mm. sits on his hands in disappointment. Holding penalty called. Even though it was a flag, let's take another look at that throw with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay. Man, Brown took a shot and still delivered a magnificent pass. Great concentration in hands by Brent Williams. But you know he has to be beating himself up. That was his moment. And or beating number 63 up. But I... <laughs> what goes on in the locker room is not our business. That's exactly what I was about to say. Thank you. After the third, after the flag, it's almost intercepted. Brown takes another big shot, but it's incomplete. It's third down and I-69 for the Steers. As it seems like we have an injured stallion on the field. That's Kyrie's Massey. Seems like he might have gotten a bit cramped up as he gets treated to on the sideline. Thankfully, he gets helped up and is walking away under his own power. Checking in for him is going to be, again, number 13, Jaheim Evans. Evans, a 5'11", 185-pound safety. Also plays a little bit of cornerback. It's third and 21. This steer drive showed lots of promise and even a possible touchdown pass, but the holding puts them here. Here's a handoff to Whitaker. Whitaker, breakneck speed. The ball is dropped. The Stallions take it the other way at the 40, 35, 30. Gets hit out of bounds at the 25-yard line. What a hit. 
And what a reception flag is thrown after the play. Man. Talk about a momentum shifter. Whitaker saw nothing but green. But taking the football back. Trying to see if we can get a read on who that was. I believe that was Evans yet again. Number 13, Jaheim Evans. Check that. That was number 21. We don't have a number for him. But what a hit indeed. But threw the ball in the air after stepping out of bounds. I guess in jubilation, but the ref was more than happy to throw the flag with the same enthusiasm. When plays like that, you have to keep your cool, especially in this close of a game with 11.36 left to go in the third. After the flag, that's going to make about a loss of 15, but it's still first and 10 for NAU. Quarterback hit as he throws his Williams. Williams completes the pass. Touchdown, NAU. 40-yard touchdown pass for the Stallions. And they take the lead back. Another big catch by Big Reeves. This guy is all over the place right now. Griffin Williams with a picture-perfect throw in tight coverage. Wow. Had absolutely no space to get the ball in. But I'll be. What a throw. I feel, I feel sorry for the for the previous games we broadcasted this month because this game and the plays that have been made are taking up a majority of the top ten. As we await the PAT, field goal is up. Good hold, get kick, and it is through. The Stallions respond with a big-time play. And wow, we got ourselves a contest. NAU snatches the lead from the Steers. Back after this short timeout, it's now 23 to 18 on the end. Dude, did you see? What a play, what a play, what a play. Fantastic throw from Griffin Williams. And an even better catch by Reeves. Wow. Quick kick, onside kick. The steers fall on it, drop down with the sure hands. It was number 47 for the steers. Don't have a number for him either. Just know that was one of the most interesting onside kicks I have seen since John Madden, 93. It's like a squib kick, but a onside kick at the same time as there is a flag thrown at about the 30-yard line. As now it seems like we may get the call. Illegal procedure penalty called against the Stallions. The Steers will take over first down and 10 with a little bit of extra change added on. With 11.25 remaining, it's 23-18. to 18. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson in the booth with you tonight. Ball will be placed on the 41-yard line. The Steers have a chance to respond, and respond they must do. Brown takes the shotgun snap, under pressure. Walloped as he throws it as complete to the flat. It's number 17. Jalen Jackson on the snag. Have yourself a game, young man. Grabbing the ball, going backwards, backpedaling and falling, and still hangs onto the ball. Great concentration by Mr. Jalen Jackson. After the completion and the gain of 15, excuse me, the gain of 14, it'll be first down and 10. Whitaker rolls out in motion, passes incomplete. As now we're seeing Brown take a lot more hits. And it seems like there's an injured stallion on the field. And as he gets treated to, 
We'll take a brief break. Back in 30 seconds, this is Tier Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Announce the name of the business on this sheet. Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh. Yo. 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 Yosemite? Yosemite? Yosemite Roofing. Or Yos. Yos me. Yosemite Roofing? Yose. Yose Mite. Yose Mite. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing. And we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. The injured stallion has been taken off of the field. The steers break their huddle along the far side. And that brings up second down and 10. 10 at 53 remaining in quarter number three. Brown's been, as, we said, as I said before the break, he's been taking a couple of big hits in the backfield. Already pressured again. Steps up. Throws. It's complete to Hookfin. Hookfin lowers the shoulder and is going to gain three. That was a hard fought three yards, and now that brings up third and long. Even when TJ Hookfin takes a hit, he protects us up. For all of you young Pop Warner middle school kids out there that's watching this game, pay up to number two. Learn how to take a hit the right way. It's third and seven. Brown drops back, winds up across the middle. It's caught. Hookfin again across the middle with a big time catch. And the steers rush back to the line. Move the chains. Steers already back in set. It's first and goal. Hand out to Whitaker. Whitaker using his block. Cuts across the right. He's going to get a solid gain. Going from the, from the eight all the way down to the three. Here's the second and goal play. Handoff. Up the middle. They push. They can't get him, but he does gain one more yard. Third and goal on the half yard line. Nine and a half remaining in quarter number three. And the Stallions have a chance to hold firm. As they have a, as they have a player a little slow to get up. On that last tackle was to Carlos Johnson, number 16. But he pops back up with a little help from the officials. Good to see even the referees helping out the guys on the field. Yes, sir. Here's third and goal from the one. Hand off to Whitaker, untouched into the end zone, touchdown, Steers. They say he fumbled it, but did they? But did he cross the plane? Yes, he did. Let's check the replay here and put it in slow motion to see. I don't know. That's 50-50 if I've ever seen it. Well, yet again, from this angle, as we pause it here and take a look, it seems as if. They crossed the pylon, or it seems as if Whitaker crossed the plane before the ball had come out. From this replay, it definitely looks like he is in for a touchdown right there. So we're going to take an even closer look. Here's an even better angle via our Circle M Crawfish instant replay. Whitaker got spun. He took a block from Bailey, the tight end. From this view, at least, it looks like he's in. It looks like Bailey is pushing him right over. Pushing him and a stallion defender. I want to give a shout-out to our uh, collegiate undergraduate cameraman right now for actually getting that. You know, as an undergrad being on the cameraman, sometimes you can not pay attention or grab your cell phone, but this guy has been right in there on the queue every time, and that's a good shot for us to be able to see this angle. That's a good touchdown by Texas College by the replay. Thank you, M. Crawfish. I would say that, yes, that is indeed a touchdown, but I don't know. That's an awkward spot. As we see, the, the bad judge is directly over the football, and, yes, they do call it a touchdown as now the Steers will go for two. Brown drops back in the end zone. Did he haul it in? Yes, he did. T.J. Hookfin, two-point conversion is good. Justin, we got ourselves a ball game after the touchdown run gets confirmed. The Steers punch it into the end zone and continue their offensive onslaught. After the Whitaker rush, 
Steers take the lead right back. It's now a three-point game. Texas College 23, Texas College 26, NAU 23. Back after this, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network. After the Whitaker one-yard touchdown rush, the Steers have taken the lead back with 9.08 remaining in quarter number three. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson here with you. As kickoff is back underway under the lights here in Stafford. Seemed like NAU might have touched the football, turning the other way and now up the middle along the hashes. And the tackle is made at the 25-yard line by the Steers, number 35, that's Sincere Richard. Richard getting his first tackle of the game. On the return for NAU was number five, Colby Clark. Clark seems like he might have touched the football right as it was rolling past him. But the Steers, thankfully, weren't able to catch up to him quick enough to cause some true damage. Anyway, first down and ten. Ball's on the 25-yard line. We've got nine minutes of football left to play in this third quarter. Justin, this has been everything it's crept up to being more. Yes, it has, and... I've been t I have been telling all of the Houston area, you got to see this game. Neither team has a win right now. They're going to fight their hardest to come out on top of this game. Williams in the gun, puts a hat not in motion. He lines up as a receiver. They're looking for him, can't get it to him. Williams sidearm incomplete. And guess who was right there for the Steers? Guess who? Number 10, Steven Ajibola. With another quarterback hurry. Ajibola is not playing around, guys. He's trying to get to the NFL by way of Texas College. If there's anybody on this roster, I feel like that could probably make it. I might, I'm, I'd have to put my money on Steven if I had to bet. Yes, sir. He's, he's already got his mind right. I think he's got a 3-2 GPA. So <laughs> he's on his way. After the incompletion from Williams, it's second and ten. 8 at 56 remaining in the third. Play clock at 3. Got to get a move on. Here's the snap. Looking. Immediately gets hurried and brought down while behind the line of scrimmage. <coughs> That's going to be a loss of about 14. Tylen Lewis, the outside linebacker who doubles as a defensive lineman, sometimes he'll sneak up on the end and just sit there and... <laughs> manhandle whatever offensive tackle you try to put in front of them, which was the case right here. The Stallions with eight and a half remaining in the third face a third and a country mile. I'd say maybe about third down in Corpus Christi. Officials mark it third and 23, but I think I like third in Corpus Christi a bit more, especially this time of year. Anywho, vacation aside, 8-10 remaining in the third. Clock rolling, and it looks like a timeout is going to be taken by the Stallions. They want to talk things over. Remember, first time out of the third quarter of play, back after this. This is Steer Football, presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2.
after the salient timeout, both the huddles break. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson here with you on this third and now 18. The officials remark the ball. And I made that Corpus Christi comment, Justin. It seems like you're. Your mind went into a to an island spot. I yeah, guess you man, I was on South Padre, looking at the wife, yelling at the kids, and us not actually having to watch the kids. <laughs> that seems like the life right there. Eight oh eight remaining in quarter number three. Williams is in the gun. Has had not to his left. Free no. I thought they would have had a free play opportunity, but it is squandered as there is a flag pre-snap. I'm not sure if this is an NAIA rule or what, but this is about maybe the seventh time I've seen where the referees have shut down the play in, in free play moments for the offense. I, I, I'm, not think, I'm not really liking this rule by the NAIA. I mean, especially with most of these guys fresh out of high school, you're used to getting that free play, that free opportunity. And especially for NAU, that free play could not only be just easy yards if it doesn't go your way, but even easier yards if you get a big play out of it. Either way, it's third down and now 13 after the penalty. Ball's right on the on the 21-yard line. Williams steps up, lets it fly, picked off! No! Did he pick it off? He didn't! The Steers couldn't haul it in. Man! Checking out the replay presented by Circle and Crawfish. The Steers just moments away from a big time takeaway. Because I don't think he maintained full possession. But either way, that pretty much could have been a punt, an arm punt, as some people like to call it. Even if it was an interception, because now you're facing fourth down and 14, well, fourth down and 13 with just a hair under eight minutes to go, and it's a punting situation anyway. Back deep to receive for the Steers is going to be number 19, Brett Williams. Williams had a touchdown snatched away by the by the, the flying yellow menace, otherwise known as the flag, as some people would call it. Kick is away. Hierarchy kick, not a lot of distance, but take a takes a really good NAU roll at about the 30. And that's exactly where they will down it. The Stallions trying to waft the ball to go an extra yard. But I don't think that's how physics works. So the Steers will take over first and 10 right at about the 29-yard line. Of all people who knows anything about physics, the wonderful Jared Moose Jones. Oh, no. Oh, no. I am a mass communication major for a reason. <laughs> 744 remaining in quarter number three. As we'll put away the textbooks and grab the rosters and spot sheets shall we that's more of my forte i'm not the I'm not a physics guy not a math guy either see sports is easy math see right now first and ten hand off to whitaker he gets brought down after gaining three see how easy that is nice and simple no formulas theories theorems triangles nice and easy gain of three it'll be second down and seven speaking of nice and easy uh Coming from the SID department, I want to remind all coaches of NAIA, please get your official rosters out by at least Tuesday to your SID. This Thursday night, Friday night business has got to end. <laughs> little personal, huh? After the Whitfield handoff is going to result in a loss of three. So those three yards they gained on the last play, pretty much no and void, bringing up third and ten. Check that. That's Whitaker on the carry. Tackle made by NAU's number 43, Justin Scales. Scales, welcome to the game. His first tackle. Yes, sir. They're going to they're gonna give him only a loss of two instead of a loss of three. I guess even my football math isn't that good. 640, Brown steps up. Ball comes loose. The steers fall on it. They get the ball back. Brown's helmet comes off. And a little bit of extra pushing and shoving after the play. And Brown is a bit slow to get up. Kind of confused on was that an interception or a fumble? Now we're going to see if we have the replay here. Try to see. I don't think we do. Now the question is, is something that even NFL guys can answer. I was it forward that movement? Wiggle. I recognize that wiggle on the ground. That is a serious cramp to the hamstring from Brown. I cannot envy that pain at all. I think my hamstring's hurting just looking at it. So That's as he gets treated to, let's take a short break. Back in about 30 seconds, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network presented by Yosemite Roofing. Announce the name of the business on this 
Name of the business? Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, oh. Yo, 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 Samite, yo, Samite, yo, the mighty roofing, or yo, yo's me, Yosmite roofing, yo, Zay, yo, Zay might, yo, Zay might. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us as long as you. After Brown gets escorted off of the field, this is the question that many have had prior to kickoff with Isaiah Sattler, the Princeton High School graduate, already being a concussion protocol with 631 left in the third. Brown is now out. Who do you look to over at quarterback? I would say, well, the obvious answer would be to go to TJ Hookfin. If we remember last year on the Antler Sports Network, as the Steers took on the 25th ranked at the time Arizona Christian Firestorm, Hookfin had a pretty good game at quarterback as Hill takes a snap. He's going to keep it, and he's got space. One man to be spins, and he's going to be short. You would think that maybe Hill would try to quick kick it or pooch kick it to try to get some extra yards or at least just try to throw it, but now NAU gets amazing field position first and 10. Tackle by number 24 for NAU, Garrett Dawson. Coming out of nowhere, Garrett is one of those tweeners. He's 5'5". Five, five. He can play running back, cornerback. You don't really like to leave him at the linebacker position, but, man, he's mean and feisty, and he'll get the job done. He did a great job of staying in the play. Did it immediately sell to what could have, well, what was expected to be the punt, and that might have saved a first down. Well, that, play, that tackle did save a first down. It's first and 10. Williams in the gun, has a man in motion. 17 seconds on the play clock. Takes a snap. Immediately pressured. Tries to get it out. Intended for Palm, but incomplete. Right on his tail for the Steers was number 31, Stacy Reynolds. Stacy had it going on, I guess you could say. Hate to, hate to, it's low hanging fruit. Feel like I had to make the joke eventually. Got to, got to. I mean, long as we're proud of his mom for showing up to the game. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't put her name into the <laughs> into the song. I don't think she's on the roster. Stacy had it going on. Hey, Stacy's mom, how you doing? Thank you for your attendance. And Mr. Stacy's dad, good to see you guys here. I wonder if they're gonna make a a Stacy's dad song. I feel sorry for Stacy, the hypothetical Stacy's dad. Well, with the independent females hitting such the hitting the airwaves so hard, it may be soon to come. Big time hit. On the outside again, guess who? Stacy's got it going on once more with a big time hit as we take another look with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay. That play is gonna result in a loss of around three, making it third down, a long third down. Third down and 13, the official spot with a 550 remaining in quarter number three. They get the play call from the sideline and now retreat back to the line of scrimmage. Four receivers out wide. Williams has a back to his left. Takes a snap. Looking left. Immediately gets it out to his running back. Shifty move. Slides through. It isn't going to get much farther. Grabbing the ankles on the tackle for the Steers was number, number 23, Jalen Smith. Smith, multitude of tackles as this game goes on. Tackling for him has not been an issue, and really for the Steers as a whole. That was one of the main questions going into this game is how efficiently 
Can the Steers keep up and most importantly tackle the speed that NAU possesses? But I feel like they've answered the bell. Mm. Here's a long field goal try. This is going to be a 49-yard field goal. It looks like a timeout's going to get taken as they will talk things over. Timeout, Stallions. They have one more timeout left, but let's keep it here. There's a very big fourth down a 49-yard field goal. I, I I got faith in him. This will be the longest field goal in Antler Sports Network history if he nails it. I got faith in him. So this could be history in the making here with a 457 in the third. The Steers up here on the road 26-23 to in the Sooner Athletic Conference matchup. Be sure to tune in to Antler Sports Network on ASN 1 this upcoming Thursday. Kickoff from 7 o'clock back in the DFW at Standard Stadium as the Trojans of Newman Smith High School host the Bison of Dallas Sunset. Again, kickoff, estimated kickoff time is 7 o'clock. That means we'll have a 6.30 pregame. It looks like the offense will go back onto the field, so no 50-yard field. That Sunset game is actually going to be a battle of the best UIL bands in the area, too. Um, both of those bands are actually award-winning combo bands. They can play UIL and show bands. Award-winning. So we might have to cut our halftime show a bit short next week. How about that? Here on fourth down, another quick substitution being made. Play clock will run. 4.57 left. It's fourth and eight. Big fourth and eight here for the Stallions. There's a jump at the line, he honestly and that will got stop back. the play. He got back on sides. I don't know why we're blowing the whistle here unless 74 uh, led him. Yep, 74 led him to pull him off sides. Let's take another look here as we take a look to see who might have jumped first. Oh, I don't know. As we slow it down a bit here. I don't think the North American offensive line moved a muscle. I'm glad you said that, Jared. I didn't want to be biased in my answer. How can I be biased with, with these two teams playing? But, yeah, I kind of felt like uh, the referees might have caught a jitter. or Maybe he sneezed. After the penalty, it's fourth and 13. Williams winds up. Here's the deep throw. Incomplete. No flag in coverage. It's guess who? Stacy Reynolds. He's got it going on. He had a big-time part in that fourth down stop. Now the Steers will take over first and ten. They're going to take a – at least I'd like to take another quick look at that last call to see who might have jumped first. Oh, maybe it seems that the – maybe the center had raised up a tad, but I don't think that was enough to justify an infraction there. Well, 450 remaining now. Texas College first and 10. They get it to Hookfin. Hookfin is dead as he stood. Getting to the ball first for NAU was number 12, Kenneth Berry Jr. The completion to Hookfin well in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of around five. Second down and long already for the Steers. Officials mark it second and 17. Clock rolling, 418. Brown steps back. Hit as he throws. Sailing, beautiful bow to hook fit incomplete. Yeah, hook fin was racing down the field, but unless he had a rocket up on the tips of his shoes or some wings like Icarus, it wasn't happening. That was a beautiful ball downfield. Hook fin was pretty much under it as best as he could. But the incompletion now makes it third and 17. And this has pretty much become a game of field position now. The first, it's pretty much a tale of two halves. First half was a lot of offense. Who could make the big plays first? And who could capitalize on big opportunities? Now it's all about field position. It's a big time third down. At the 31, Brown looking to go deep again. It's caught by Cooper. Cooper's going to be short. Finally, Mr. Cooper gets in there with his sure hands and snags that ball down out of the air. That's the weird thing about Cooper. He's going to make the tougher play. The easy plays he makes look tough. 
in the hard place, he makes it look easy. That's a gain of 15, and now an important fourth and two. As now Brown, both Brown and Jalen Jackson have a quick word of advice from their head coach, Jarrell Jackson. Jackson, the former Sooner, here in the Rose City to lead the Steers. Brown, and that's a flag. False start penalty called against the Steers. A big time false start penalty called. As now that in that big time catch from Cooper has now pretty much been snatched away. Now looking at fourth and seven, the Steers with three and a half remaining. And it looks like the Steers are going to take a quick timeout. Talk about it. Talk things over. But we're going to keep it here to talk it over as well. I think the well, no, looks like they're, they didn't call a timeout. They're just going to throw, go and throw in the punting unit. Much can't blame them as Hill looking to kick. NAU sending the house, almost blocked. Hill a high arc kick into the Houston sky. And this gets a fantastic roll. It's rolling, it hits the 20, and that's exactly where it'll be marked down. And NAU will take over first and 10. Honestly, I feel like that was just the best decision to make for Texas College. Punt the ball away. Don't make it any more easier for this NAU offense who has seemed to slowly but surely starting to find their stride. It definitely seemed like Texas College got out of what they really have been doing, which is running the play, running the ball, softening up the defense, and then relying on your pass. That time they were just looking for big plays, and the Stallions, you know, that's all they have been happening against them as big plays for the whole year so that's the one thing that they're going to stop they're trying to keep everything in front of them great strategy indeed especially against this electric texas college offense first and 10 balls now on the 27 after the punt from hill here's williams and yet another flag could possibly a false start but the Head linesman walks over to discuss, and it is indeed a false start. I want to give a quick thank you to the officiating crew for tonight's contest. Led by the White Hat, the referee, both Mr. Kenny Cleric. Had a pleasant conversation with him pregame. Was excited for tonight's contest, and justifiably so. We've had a lot of fantastic football. After the penalty, makes it first and 15. 318 remaining in quarter number three. Williams in the gun, takes a snap, looks to his right, has him on the flat, but almost goes across the middle. Looks like it was almost caught by a lineman, but in coverage for the steers was going to be number 44, Dustin Thomas, the linebacker. Almost had an interception there. Thankfully for NAU, he was able to simply bat it down instead of get his hands on the football and go the other way. after the incompletion, brings up second and 15. So number 41 for NAU, Jalen Williams. He's actually listed as a tight end, but NAIA tight ends pretty much run blockers in this conference. Pretty much just extra tackles. Yeah. Very few NAI schools use tight ends the way that Texas College has utilized Bailey. Williams looking. Gets pressure. Throw across the middle to Hatnot. Hatnot with a big time spin. It gets to the outside. Still going. Breaking for the first down marker. Goes out of bounds. And that will make this third down even easier. Had not, don't let the size fool you. The kid is electric. He literally jumped up in the air and did a reverse 360 looking like Vince Carter dunking the ball to catch the ball. Great play. That There's two flags. In the two flags in the backfield. Man. I don't know where you can find some penalty repel it, but both teams look like they need a couple of cans. The flags have been flying in the later portions of this third quarter with 3.02 left. Holding penalty called against NAU. And now what was second down and 15. It's going to be second down in a country mile. Man. You can the still fans hear the are not excited with that call not at all they've had a as i said earlier they've had a really rough go go 
It's second and 20 after the penalty. 250, now 247 remaining in quarter number three. Williams winds up, throws, almost intercepted. Yeah, number 40, Broderick Brown has been everywhere today on the field, and he let that one slide right through his fingertips. Could have had a great in diving interception right there on that play. But that brings us back to third and 21 for the Stallions. A difficult third down spot now. This is the exact same situation that Texas College was in, in the, on the other side of the field. This goes to show that these are pretty two evenly matched teams, both in terms of talent and tendencies. But it's just what team is going to break first. That'll be the ultimate determinant in who could win this game. Williams on third and long. Winds it deep and complete. That pass was intended, ironically, for the tight end, Jalen Williams. Just a little bit too much mustard on that one. That'll make it fourth down. Yeah, he put too much mustard on the glizzy. Ain't that what the young people say these days? Uh, no, not me. Yeah, but that was a beautiful tight spiral on that pass. We got to work on this accuracy from these quarterbacks right here in AU. Punt time again for the Stallions. Back deep to receive for the Steers. That's Brent Williams. Williams lost seven yards on his last punt return. Looking to turn his luck around here. High snap, almost blocked yet again. Ball takes a bounce almost at midfield. Williams takes it around the 40 and gets brought down. He's going to gain only a yard. Fantastic downfield special teams coverage by the Stallions. On the hit for NAU is number 22 up here. I believe that's number 22. Can barely see what the numbers are a bit scrunched up. That is 82. I can't confirm that's Christian Warren, the six foot one, 200 pound wide receiver flying downfield to make the tackle. Christian Warren is another one of these guys that's a blur. He's actually a double athlete at, at, at NAU, track and football. So when you say he's got track speed, <laughs> you actually mean it. It's no kidding. 225 now as the Steers take back over first and 10. Went for and out on their last drive, looking to turn their luck around here. Play clock sitting at 17. Brown winds up, downfield, and he got it! He caught it! What a play from Cooper! Oh my! Great concentration by the receiver to haul it in. Pass is complete. One of the many nephews that I have left over from Texas College, as I bragged on him earlier, Cooper's going to make the tough plays look easy. Double bobble lobble, and he brings it down anyway. Man. Oh, wow. Another play that's just left me absolutely speechless. <laughs> it's first and ten. We have a stoppage, and it looks like Texas College is going to take a brief timeout to try to process what just happened. I think I need a timeout, too. We'll take it 30 seconds back after this. This is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Yosemite Roofing. After the snag from Cooper, as we take another look at the absolute circus catch before this first down and 10 after this tier timeout, I think we already have an early contender for our moment of the game. Man, what a play from Cooper. Here's first and 10. Brown looking, goes the end zone, almost intercepted. I saw you cringe, Justin, after that possible interception. Big time opportunity for NAU as on coverage. Well, one of the men in coverage with Kenneth Barry Jr. again. As you can see, the coaches and some of the players on the Stallion sideline absolutely livid and deservedly so. That was a big opportunity. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Stallions, you got two Stallions going for the ball. They just ran into each other, kind of took each other out of the play. 
three-point game. Handoff, up the middle, stutter stepping through is going to be Banks. He's only going to get a yard, as it seems that now NAU's defense has done a great job in preventing the run. They hit Banks like five times. He refused to go down, and then number 43 came up with mm -hmm. one hand, grabbed that foot, and down he went. That's Justin Scales, the six foot two ten defensive end on the tackle. Scales, even though he doesn't have many tackles, has done a great job containing that outside. In the first quarter, that looked like that was going to be the game plan for the Steers, at least on the offensive side. Use your speed, destroy the outside, but now NAU looks like they've shut it down. Here's Brown, throwing it up the middle, but it's incomplete. It's in it for Bailey. As Scales is becoming the fireman. He's there right when you call him. We need a big play, brother. We need to go put out this fire right quick. That's he's exactly what he's been doing as... On the far, on the close side of the formation, excuse me, the far side of the formation, that being the left side closest to us here in the booth, there's Banks looking at Brown asking, hey, I'm open. <laughs> we don't really see Banks in motion go out as a far outside receiver, but on that play he was definitely open. And he's also not the type of kid to come back to the huddle and complain. Cooper with another snag out the air, about three feet taller than him, way to get up and grab that Cooper. And even hang on to the football as a herd of stallions go to greet him immediately. But that will be a turnover on downs as they cannot convert on fourth and nine. And the stallions will take possession back first and ten in pretty, pretty murky field position. Look like we got a herd stallion. The stallion that made the tackle on that play is at number 95. I believe that looks like number 95. That'd be Josiah Walker, the defensive tackle. With a minute 17 remaining in quarter number three. This third quarter is definitely the slowest quarter we've had all game long. We've been ripping and running the first two quarters of the game, but now it seems like this fatigue is finally setting in. That good old Texas humidity is setting in as we're now at 81 degrees. Not a cloud in the sky. Only thing is the beautiful full moon right above us here at, St here at Spartan Stadium, home of the NAU Stallions. With the crescent moon, full moon, I had to go ahead and give a shout out to the divine nine of all the Greeks of Texas College, Phi Beta Sigma, Alpha Phi Alpha, Kappa Alpha Psi, Alpha Kappa Alpha, Delta Sigma Theta, Omega Sci Phi, and if I'm forgetting anyone, SG Rose, please don't hit me up. First down, almost a first down carry there from Griffin Williams. They're going to mark him short. Result of the play is going to be second down and nine. Oh, excuse me, second and one after a gain of nine. 55 seconds. This could possibly be the last play of the quarter, depending on how the Stallions decide to play it here. NAU with a one timeout, Texas College with two. 40 seconds now. Williams making an adjustment, puts a man in motion. Texas College looking to send the pressure, and they do. They rush five. Quick pitch to the outside. Tackle almost made, but second time's the charm. That's going to be a loss of a yard. And now 30 seconds remaining now coming up third and two. The Sear defense, if there's a time to try to put the, one, or at least set up one of the final nails in the coffin, it's a stop here on third down and force the punt. That tackle made on the outside by the Steers, number 93. That's Tylen Lewis. Lewis doing a great job, even though he's a, he's a big guy, plays offensive and defensive line, using that speed to break off and finish the tackle. But he followed the play. You know, a lot of guys don't do that these days. They see the play is past them, they stop running. That's the horn sounds. We play three quarters of football. Only 15 minutes remain in this competitive contest. After three, we get ready to head to the fourth. The Steers only up three. The Stallions not too far behind. Texas College 26, North American 23. This is... College Football on AS Hit 2, presented by Caribbean Kitchen.
Circle M Crawfish Proud, longtime sponsors of the Antler Sports Network and our instant replay sponsor. And boy, howdy, if we have plenty of instant replay moments throughout this game. Yes, we do. Looking to have a couple more as the final 15 minutes of regulation, at least, are up on the clock and we're ready to go. NAU will take it back over. Now looking at third and one. Ball is on the 19-yard line. Twenty-two seconds on the play clock now. In the gun is Williams. Has one back. It's going to be a keeper right up the middle down Main Street into the mayor's office, and that'll move the chains. First and ten stallions. Williams at the last minute called a checkoff audible, the old Omaha Omaha button, and called his own number. Ran it right up the middle. Worked perfectly. Williams has done a great job taking over this game. And I guess you can say he's taking the steer by the horns. Yes, sir. All the way to the stable. 14 and a half minutes remaining. We've crossed 30 seconds. 17 and now 15 on the play clock. Fresh set of downs for the Stallions. Same formation as the previous play. Two receivers on the short side of the field. Lone receiver at the top of your screen. Williams going to go deep. Hollywood, no, it's incomplete. Flag is thrown. Going step for step. With the intended target for the Steers was number 20. That's Tyler Mitchell. Mitchell was pretty much there with him from every step of the way. The intended target was Nathaniel Green. He hasn't been targeted much in this game, but when he has, it's always for a big time play. With 14 12 left to go, it is indeed a pass interference call, and that'll move the chains. And another first down now for the Stallions. You'd hate to see them squander this opportunity, especially this late in the game, when every possession, every flag, every mental mishap, every brain fart could probably cost you a game. It's only a three-point contest. First and ten. Here's Williams. Williams awaiting the snap. Hauls it in another flag. Offsides, no, excuse me, false start penalty called against NAU. That'll push them back five more yards, and I'll make it first and 15. Early 90s, there was a song by Paul Abdul, two steps forward, one step back. Now one step back, and that's trying to make you short three points with 14, 12 left to go, especially now that both teams are getting a lot more Risky and a lot more daring with their offensive play calls. At this point, it's who's going to make the big mistake first. Man in motion for NAU is McChristen. Throw across the side is incomplete. Pass was intended for the big target, number 41, Jalen Williams. He's 6'2", 260, so definitely a big target. Williams just couldn't get it to him. Now it's second down and long. This is four straight drives in a row for either team where they're well inside their own territory facing a second and long or a third and long all set up by penalties. Now, Williams clearly dropped that ball. It was a bad, it was a bad pass. He had opportunity to get it, but man, are these fans getting on to the coach of Pondy right now. One thing about these Stallion fans as the game has gone on, they are not afraid to let their emotions be known. Two seconds on the play clock. They get it. 14 minutes remaining across the middle. Hit incomplete. Pass was attended yet again for number 41, Williams. But on the deflection and taking a big hit at the same time. And walking it off. It was going to be number 23, Jalen Smith again. But there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. No surprise there, honestly, I'd say at this point. Jalen Williams has been working hard all summer. He was down there with me in the CrossFit connection. You know, I take a lot of the guys in the summertime, and we just do I, – I introduce them to different workouts. We do some MMA and a lot of things. Jalen has been one of the guys. He's been hitting every workout with every group, every team. He goes with basketball. He's really been trying to slim down and get trim. Now he's following the steps to get open. But he's got to remember to hang on to the ball, like we were saying about Cooper earlier. Well, if that's any indication, then I feel like he might be just fine because Cooper has definitely showed up and showed out in the later stages of this game. Penalty against the Stallions. 
Texas College elects to decline. It'll be 14.01 remaining balls on the 33-yard line, 22 seconds on the play clock. The Stallions break the huddle in their navy tops, white bottoms, and their beautiful white helmets, I have to say. Very solid uniform combination. The Steers in their visiting white tops and purple bottoms. It's third and long after the flag. Declined by Texas College. Williams looking. Pumps. Steps up. Lets it flies. He's hitting it. No. Incomplete flag is thrown. Seems like a little bit of extra talking after the play. As we get a replay here, Williams took an absolute shot after letting the football go, and that's about as obvious of a pass interference as you can get. No, it's offensive pass interference. Oh, my. All right. Wow. Uh, offensive pass interference. This is this is wonderful to hear. I'm just listening to all the passionate fans. We haven't been getting this a lot in this area. Um, just the fans have have always been passionate, but tonight it's such a strong and tough close game. They're not giving up on this one. Letting the officials have it for sure. This might be the most vocal crowd I've ever experienced in my three and a half years of broadcasting. I see one of the parents have pulled up their Amazon ordering form. They were talking about getting the rest some glasses. This <laughs> is really <laughs> some passionate fans. You sir. think they have Amazon Prime? I know they do. <laughs> <laughs> their students go to North American University. <laughs> they do have Prime. And as the steers take a timeout, we're going to keep it here. It's going to be fourth and 14 after play resumes. And Coach Apondi speaking with... A couple of the officials. Another coach is talking to two more officials. Man, wow. This game has, you can cut the tension with a with a spork. <laughs> One of those school sporks you get back in elementary school. Waiting on the new spot. Looks like he's walking it off now. Or maybe not. Oh, well, he's about to pick the ball up. Maybe so. The umpire is looking at the football. The umpire being Mr. Jeff Voss. Ball's, ball's on the 33. Indeed it is. It's going to be fourth and 15. It's punting time yet again as Williams is back deep to receive for the Steers. 13 minutes, 52 seconds remaining in this game. We haven't had a score in an I don't know how long. I've almost lost track of time. High kick. Beautiful kick. Soaring through the sky. Gets an amazing bounce. It's still rolling, but bounces out of bounds right at about the 15. And that's about a perfect half of, of a punt as you can get. Yes. That, I mean, that is it. That's, that's what you look for. Hard to the outside. Unreturnable. <laughs> and gets a fantastic bounce. Traveled, might have traveled a good 15 or so yards. As we say in Fort Worth, Texas, Squall Creek Golf Course, we got the membership bounce on that one. <laughs> Well, how's this for a little controversy? We got a final score in the MLB here. The Rangers defeating the Mariners six to one, and have eventually have officially clinched their first playoff berth since 2016. And as a lifelong Rangers fan, man, is, does that feel good to say? Let's go ahead, Rangers, shake off the September blues. As we know, you have finally dropped games in September, so I'm proud of you guys. I grew up in the ballpark of Arlington, so I understand. I know that's not the name anymore, but that's my memories. Well, as someone that's been through the multiple, 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 multiple ups and downs, mostly downs as a Rangers fan, as of late at least, it's good to see. And it's good to see another great game here as the first play of the new drive for the Steers is going to result in a loss of two, thus making it second down and 12. 13 minutes, seven seconds remaining in the fourth. Brown has one back. Drops, has pressure, hit as he throws again. Pass is, are they going to mark him complete? Yes, they mark it complete. Let's get another look at that catch that was good for a, a gain of three to see if he did indeed haul in that football. 
Great catch by Brown across the middle. Yes, I'd say he hauled it in. Move the chains first. Well, don't move the chains just yet, but what was a second and long is now only is a much more manageable third and eight as we hit 12 and a half minutes in this game. This is we're knocking on the door of crunch time now. This is crunch time. We're not even knocking. Number 16 got a little happy feet over there talking noise at number 12 and couldn't hear his quarterback. That's Tyler Jones, number 16. Ironically enough, both of us have a little something in common. We both attend at Chapel Hill High School, home of the Bulldogs. Great name, great name, and Tyler Jones also. Jones is a family name. I'm related to a lot of people named Jones in East Texas, and, of course, Tyler is one of the best cities in East Texas. Ironically, I don't think we're related. Here we go. <laughs> Third down and long after the flag. Throw is not going to be made as Brown is going to call his own number. Did he get the first down or did he step out? He did. He stepped out a yard, two yards before with a gain of 11. Got to get another look at that play here to see exactly when he stepped out. Seemed like he was indeed a yard short. Yes, he was a yard short. That'll make it fourth down and maybe the length of the football. And once again, it's punting time for the Steers. Here's the punt, takes a great Texas college roll, and it's still rolling now, looking at almost a 30, but no. Steers will have to settle for pinning the Stallions back to the 31-yard line. And yet another offensive possession started by either of these teams that's going to be well within their own territory. Now their team just able to capitalize on putting the points on the board. Justin, when you can, I know you've been doing a great job keeping up with stats. Can we figure out the last time we had a scoring play? That'd be that'd definitely be something I'd be interested in seeing. Well, 11.40 left to go. It's now first down and 10. Stallions looking to march down the field. Handoff from Williams. Stutter step to the outside. Multiple steers there to bring down the running back, and he's going to get a pretty good gain of about six. On the carry for the Stallions, ironically, it's the tight end. It's Jalen Williams now getting a couple carries out of the backfield. Good to see that Williams at his size is versatile. 11-28 in the third quarter was our last touchdown. Jason Rees from Griffin Williams. Man, that seems like ages ago. After the Williams carry is good for six. After the Williams carry is good for six, it's second down and four. We've crossed 11 minutes, five on the play clock. Direct snap, he immediately gets bobbled and brought down behind the line. I don't know if that was intended to be a direct snap or maybe the handoff was jumped, but either way, big time tackle is made by Sincere Mullen, his second TFL of tonight's game. That's going to be a loss of three and bring up third down and seven. Ten twenty, clock now rolling. The Steers looking to bring the pressure. Looking to rush maybe six. Man in motion. Williams looking, blindsided, shrugs off the sack. Throw to the outside of the flat is complete. Crosses the 40 in the line to gain big time truck. Fantastic catch and upfield run by Bryce Mullins. Seems like we have an injured steer while he gets attended to. Let's take another look at that replay. That was a big time truck. Man, talk about putting your body on the line as this replay is brought to you by Circle M Crawfish. And as the injured steer gets attended to, we'll take a short break back in 30 seconds. This is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network. Can you announce the name of the business on this sheet? Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, oh. Yo, 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 y
or yo's, yo's me. Yo's me to your feet. Yose, Yose might. Yose might. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. After the injured steer was escorted off the field, we're back ready to go after the carry was good for a stallion first down. Ten minutes and two seconds remaining in tonight's game. Ball is on the 46-yard line. Williams and company leading his offense back onto the field. And he was using multiple quarterbacks throughout this game. It seems that there will be another pre-snap penalty. Most likely called against the Steers, and that's what it will be. I haven't seen Ajibola on this defensive line for a few plays now. That's actually a pretty valid point as a scale down the sideline to see where we can find him. Man, that would be a huge... Huge asset for your defense right now. Because after the offsides penalty, that's going to make it first down and five for NAU. Aji Bola is indeed on the sideline. Doesn't seem to be hurt. Two seconds on the play clock. They get the playoff. Throw from Williams is caught. Maybe yes. Officials give him the completion. That's a gain of six. First down for the Steers. Excuse me, first down for the Stallions. I have my, my, my stables confused. Got your stables confused. Don't you hate when that happens? Get your stables confused. Anywho. In this case, it might have been the barn because that was a Stallion. So let's go. Well, I'm trying to think. Would you see a steer? You would see a steer on a farm. I would assume so. In some farms, at least. Yeah, in the back lot, getting ready to get shipped out. <laughs> first down and ten. Farm talk is over, at least for now. That's a big-time run, and it gets slotted down, and no, he's still up. Multiple steers tried to bring it down at number eight, Bryce Julian. And Julian's going to have a gain of seven. That might be the toughest seven yards I've <coughs> ever seen made, taking multiple steers with him on the run. Forward progress is only going to give them six, however. And I'll make it second and four instead. Either way, a fantastic run. Eight minutes and 54 seconds. Clock is, has stopped for some reason. I don't know why the stoppage of play would have been made. It was definitely a... It seems like they're going to stop play here. Don't know why the clock wasn't rolling. And now, here we go. That's more like it. Clock now rolls. 8.50 remaining in the fourth. It's second and about four to go. I like how they wait till they got down to the six seconds on the play clock before they decided, oh, wait a minute, we should blow the whistle. Speaking of whistles, we got whistles and flags galore. Laundry all over the place. Fall start penalty called against the Stallions. We'll make it now second and nine. Man, every referee on the field threw the flag. I wonder if they, I'd love to see how football referees train, if they train how they throw their flags, if it's the good old underhand, is it the grab and then overhand. I love to see the different flag throwing techniques. I know as of recent years, it's been throw it away from the Neanderthal in the uniform on the field. <laughs> I'm a player, I would hate to get hit anywhere by a flag, especially if it's on me. That's why I like playing basketball. A lot less confrontation. Second and nine. Here's the run up the middle from Julian. He gets stuffed well behind the line, and he's going to lose a yard. That's going to make it third and ten. Multiple steers on the hit. First one to get there was number 44, Dustin Thomas. Thomas has been a man possessed. Especially from a linebacker. He's been getting there before most of the defensive linemen have. Yes. Playing hard. I mean, he he, he laid the... The, the smackdown. Yeah. To quote Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the smacketh down. Right now, number eight is on the sideline with the Stallions uh, check, rechecking his pads and uniform jersey. That's Julian, the one who had that big-time run before that flag. It's now third and ten. 
7.45 in the fourth. Quick throw, across the middle, incomplete. Stallions wanting a flag for pass interference. I want to definitely want to take a look at that and see if that demand for pass interference was justified. To me, it looked like number three got away with a false start. He was already down the field before the ball got hiked. Definitely a little bit of movement from the offensive line. And I have to say, I can understand the frustration or want for a pass interference call. But on the other side of the coin, NAU possibly could have gone away with a false start. So I guess it all kind of evens out. No flag was ever thrown. Fourth and ten. It's punt time for the Stallions. Williams back deep. Steers get a great jump on it, but won't get a chance to block it. Gets a good Texas college roll, and now is going to go back a good five or so yards and get down and around the 21-yard line. <coughs> Not bad at all, almost as if a touchback was made. Pretty good kick again. He's been kind of in, in his pocket, if you will. Put one out, out of bounds at the 18, put one out of bounds at the 5, and now he's sealed him right here up against the 20-yard line. Almost a better possession than a touchback, if you will, because it's negative 20 yards. Got an extra, a little bit of extra change on that one. Yes, sir. Membership bounce. That's like getting extra fries in the bottom of your bag. Maybe I'm just hungry. Who I knows? love me some water burger. Or some Circle M crawfish. Indeed. Located in Big Sandy is a Texas bucket list location. Proud longtime sponsor of the Antler Sports Network. Seven and a half minutes remaining. The Steers need a great drive here. They try to get it open. They try to get it kicked off with a handoff up the middle to Whitaker. Whitaker isn't going to get very far. That's going to be for no gain. The first stallion to get there is going to be number 98. That's Kenny Ogletree getting his first tackle of the game. That's a great name, Ogletree. <laughs> I love that last name. I I I, I kind of want to open a store, a bonsai tree store. Ogletree called Ogletrees. That yeah. sounds like a very nice store. Yes, sir. Hey, honey, I'm going to Ogletrees. Running errands. 701 <laughs> left after the stop. Brown looking, quick throw across the middle for Hookman, and he gets level. Big time hit there by number 16 to Carlos Johnson. Johnson wasting no time putting the hit stick on Hookman across the middle. Yeah, big uh, Johnson was waiting on that. You know, the story is Hookman doesn't take any tackles. You know, he don't get tackled. He, he goes down, but he doesn't get tackled. At that time, they changed the narrative, didn't they? He took a tackle there for sure. That's a gain of three. Here's a snap. Big third down. Hook fin this time slides out of bounds, and there he is again. Move the chains as he slides out safely. First and ten for Texas College on the tackle for NAU. It was number seven. Jess were. That was Jess were Corkalanen, ironically. Took some snaps at quarterback earlier in this game. Mm -hmm. Now doing a little bit of defensive work. Hookfin stepped out of bounds, so the clock will stop. No, the clock will run. I thought he stepped out of bounds going forward. Definitely did. It's at first down. The clock should have stopped. All right, 6-10 remaining in the fourth. Brown back in the gun with two backs. They hand it off to Whitaker. Whitaker stutter steps. It isn't going to get far. He's going to lose five. Whitaker almost looked like he was trying to find a lane or a block, but... No help from his offensive line or any of the downfield receivers as now the clock will roll. That big time loss makes it second and 14 after the spot. Still have yet to see Steven Ajibola really do too much movement. He was on the sideline the last defensive drive. He hasn't been hurt. I haven't seen the trainer really attend to him. Interesting to see what transpires there. Brown gets pressure, steps up in the pocket. Almost decided to throw, but instead will roll out and go out of bounds. And he gets hit on the way there. That's a gain of six. Check that and make that a gain of seven. And make it third down and seven to go. We're about to hit the five-minute mark. Because now it seems like the Steers are going to try to slow things down and drain as much clock as possible. But with it only being a three-point game, the Stallions only need a field goal to tie this thing back up. Here's Brown. Brown, throw is incomplete intended for Hookfin. Right on his heels for the Stallions was number 26, Kevin Jamerson. 
Jamerson, a great job in coverage there to force punt time yet again for the Steers. Seems like neither team has really been able to find an opening or find any kind of momentum. The complete opposite of what we saw in the first half. Yep. The butterflies are gone now that everyone's settled down, and they may have settled four, if you know what I mean. We've gone from butterflies to rhinos. Yes. Not a lot of movement at all. Lethargic if is the word. Lethargic. How's that for a word of the day? High kick. Hill gets it straight up in the air. It isn't going to go very far. Gets a pretty solid roll. The stallion is taken. Five, four, three, two. A touchdown, NAU. Way to capitalize off the sky high punt. Wow. Trying to get a read as to who hauled that one in. 19. Looks like that was, yes, indeed, it was number 19. That's Zachary easily, easily taking the punt back into the end zone. 29 yards for the score. NAU's back up three. Wow, 442 left. Do I smell overtime? Who knows? Do we have to, will we have another overtime game with you here? You're bad luck for regulation. That's 4.42 remaining, awaiting the PAT. The snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is up through the uprights and good. That dude don't miss, man. After the punt touchdown is in, the Stallions have taken the lead back. 4.42 left. We got ourselves a slobber knocker. The Stallions 30, the Steers 26. Back in 30 seconds on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Coming out of the momentum shifting touchdown for the Stallions. Ready to kick things back off again. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson with the 442 remaining. Steals now, field goal isn't going to cut it. No. You got to get into the end zone. Both teams with one timeout. And Stallion fans are so educated. No onside kick are the is being yelled from the mom section. <laughs> William takes the kickoff at about the five. Turns up field. Might have a little bit of space here if he can make a move. He does, but not before he gets spun. And a flag is thrown to the opposite side of the field. Seems like there was a little extracurricular on the close side of the 20. One of the players involved, at least for the Steers, it was number 34, Tardale Williams. The Turtle. That's a heck of a nickname. Tardale the Turtle. Yeah. Almost sounds like a, like a kid's storybook. A he moves book. at his own pace. He always finishes the race. He's very dependable. And he's actually a pretty good photographer. Tardale's got a future. Penalty is indeed called against the Steers. And that'll move them back. Well within their own territory, first and 10, 434 remaining. Brown is in the gum with four receivers. Here's the throw. It's complete diving. Looks like he might have lost his footing. The turf monster got him. But either way, the pass is complete for a solid gain of about eight. No check that, a gain of about seven. And I'll make it second down and three. Sears rushing back to the line. High snap. Hauled in by Brown. Takes a strike. Hits a man in the flat. And completion made by DeAndre Hill. Hill goes out of bounds on his own volition. Clock will roll as the chains get moved. We've crossed the four-minute mark. 
The sand slowly falling out of the hourglass. It's first and 10. Throw is intended for Cooper, incomplete. In coverage for NAU was number 12. That's Barry Jr. again. He's played a snap at safety, at middle linebacker, as a corner. I think I saw him even serve a, a pizza in the concession stand prior to the game. He's done everything. He's definitely the guy that put the snacks up here. He's on detail for, for Caitlin <laughs> Cottle. <laughs> Second down to 10 after the incompletion. 3.50 remaining. Play clock's at 10. Handoff. Out to Whitaker. He's got a head of steam. Turns up field. Gets rolled down, but not before he gains eight. It's third and two. A big time third down and two. This is the biggest third down and two of the game for the Steers. As we have a stoppage of play. Officials timeout. It seems like we have an injured Stallion on the opposite side of the field. And as he gets attended to, let's take a break. You're watching College Football on the Antler Sports Network. As we come back from break, 334 remaining. Stallion fans trying to bring a little bit of life to the Stallion defense on the biggest third down play of the game. The Steers, if they want to keep their hopes of winning this game intact, they have to convert. Yes. The Stallion fans are feeling it. They know they just need one stop. This is a very uncharacteristic traveling fanship of the Texas college fans. They haven't said practically anything since the beginning of the third quarter, and that is definitely not like Texas college fans. Probably two of the most vocal fans in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Flag is thrown, possibly a hold. Brown gets out of Dodge, gets the first down, and still looking for more. But I don't know. That could have been a possible hold. We we'll take another look here with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay. Little ticky tacky touchiness on the field right now. Got to break up half of a fight. Thankfully, it hasn't been anything too hectic. This is the same NAU team that had a pretty solid showing against Texas Wesleyan a couple of weeks ago. Wesleyan recently falling to the 23rd team in the country in St. Thomas out of Miami Gardens, Florida. And that is a hold call, or is a penalty, excuse me, against the Steers. And that'll push him back and now make it third down and I-45 to go. You know, the Paul Abdul song comes back at it again. As soon as we start making progress, somebody's got to lose their discipline and take us back. Whitaker back in it, running back. Brown in the gun. Looking. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to run it again and take it himself. He slides down. Was he a yard short? Yes, he was. Great job by Brown to have the pocket presence to step up and let it rip. Looks like he might have had a receiver downfield that he saw as he tried to direct traffic. But instead, calls his own number. It's going to be a yard short. Fourth down and one for the Steers. And this could possibly be the game right here. Two minutes, 50 seconds left. It's fourth and one. Here's the snap. Brown gets it to Hook Fit. Hook Fit gets a first down and more. Striking the sideline down at midfield. And that'll move the chains. There go that man. TJ Hook Fit. The sideline artist. Do you hear me? Indeed he is. Tiptoes and pitter-patters along the hash marks. Stays in bounds and is an early contender for our Yosemite Roofing GOAT player of the game. 227 and counting in the fourth. Possible game winning drive. They're going to go deep for Cooper. He complete. No, did he catch it? Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Waiting on the official word as Cooper is slow to get up. The chains are moving down the field. 
Justin Jackson, there's no way he made that catch. Mama, there go that man. Daddy, there go your nephew. Because he is a Cooper. Oh, my goodness. As we take another look at the absolute circus catch on the replay, as Cooper is slow to get up, he caught that football. Yes, he did. Wow. He caught that football. That is absolutely absurd. That's ridiculous. That is inhuman. Beautiful catch there in tight coverage of the amazing throw from Brown. And Cooper is still down. And as he gets tended to, we're going to take a short break. Back after this, this is College Football on ASN2. After Cooper is treated on the sideline, man, what a play. Yes, sir. I don't care what anyone says. That might be play of the game. And we still have another two minutes and 15 seconds of football left to be played. Well, while he's down there getting his uh, self checked out, I've already sent word to one of our PAs to go check his gloves for some stick em. We need to that, – that man needs to be tested. <laughs> there, that's, that's not right. Great play. Reminds me of uh, Jason Goss, uh, former NFL Cardinal, Edmonton Oiler or Edmonton football player from CFL. Great wide receiver and cornerback. He, the guy would catch anything. So, shouts out to Jason Goss, uh, 1998 O.D. Wyatt graduate. Happy 25th anniversary, by the way, sir. Man, there's – I can look at this replay as many times as possible – I still don't understand how he made that catch. He's got the hands of Alvin Harper, the mind of a Michael Irvin. Man. Getting open abilities of Andre Johnson. As, as Michael Irvin a, would say, that's a that's a finger-looking good special play right there. Yes, good sir. night, nurse. 207 left to go. Brown steps up, steps up across. Might have got an extra yard. Yes, he did. That's going to be a gain of three. So the Steers were in a – Double play action right there for him to keep it. So it actually could have been a tri typical triple option. But with Brown's flight or feet, I'm pretty sure he had no intention of handing that ball off. Minute 43 remaining. It's second and seven. 18 on the play clock. Brown on the gun. Whitaker is the back to his right. Takes a snap, immediately looking left. Still looking left, gets it to Whitaker. Whitaker, nice juke move, but eventually gets brought down. He's only going to gain two. Much to the delight. I haven't said that much all, very often tonight. No, much yeah. to the delight of the NAU faithful. Yes, sir. But I would have done the same thing. Give it to your workhorse and let's see what he can get done. They're going to say it was no gain. Make it third and seven. It looks like we might have a timeout call. No, it was a flag. Flag thrown by the line judge. Jason false Dush, start. And it is a false start against the Steers. I won't say it this time. I'll just drop it in there. Paul Abdul. 
Paul Abdul might be a contender for player of the game as much as he's been brought up today. Third and 13. Brown looking to go deep. Steps up, getting chased, and he's brought down. Big defensive stop for NAU. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. That's going to be a loss of about three. Ball will now be at the 25-yard line. 53 seconds left. This is the game. This is quite literally the ball game right here. And it seems like a timeout's going to get called. Steers are going to talk things over. We're going to keep it here. Man, no matter what the score ends up being, Justin Jackson, what a game this has been. Yes, it is. I told you guys from the beginning, I've been promoting this game huge. This is going to be a hard-fought game. Didn't think it would be a barn burner, but guess what we got? A slobber knocker, as you said earlier. Shades of Jim Ross. Hall of Fame professional wrestling commentator. 53 seconds left. Both teams out of the huddle in the timeout. And as I just mentioned, this is it. This, this is, is it. This is it. Close. This, Shout out to Michael Jackson. This is it. This is for the stable, the barn, the ranch, and the farm. I tried on that one, guys. I know you're laughing at home on how corny <laughs> I am. Dad Crowd jokes. is on their feet. Shotgun snap. Brown steps up. And oh, caught. He caught it. He caught it. First down steers with 45 seconds to go. There's an injured stallion as we take another look. Is that Holding, number three? Anthony Holden, baseball player who puts on the pads. That kid is can catch anything in the outfield, so you know what he's going to do in some pads. Man, what a catch. And as he gets tended to, we'll take another 30-second break. 45 seconds left. What a game this has been. Back after this on ASN2. It's crunch time here on ASN2. 45 seconds left to go. The Steers knocking on the door of the end zone, looking to take their lead back after a Cooper Circus catch and now a Holden Circus catch. Who's next? Justin, are you going to get out there and make a spectacular catch? Who no, knows? No, no, no. I can hear Coach Cross right now yelling at me. Brother, you can't run. What are you doing? Sit down. <laughs> It's first and goal for the Steers. 43 seconds, clock is rolling. Whitaker goes out in motion. Brown, fade bar the end zone, incomplete. Hit as he was thrown, and that's probably the hurry of, a, of Amari's life. Big number 40, Amari Calhoun. That was probably his best hurry that he could ever take credit for because if he hadn't hit the quarterback, that would have been in the back of the end zone for six. Hookfin had gotten separation going towards the back corner of the end zone. Now 36 seconds left. Second and goal. Ball's on the five. Whitaker the back to Brown's left. One receiver on the far side of the formation. Hookfin in motion. They're looking to him. No, it's across the middle. Incomplete. Another big time stop. Now it's third down. 30 seconds left. Man, this has been a breathtaking game. 31 seconds, ball still on the five. It's third down yet again. Holden made the big time catch on the last third down. Let's see who steps up for the steers. 14 on the play clock. The coach brought in some speed with Jaheim uh, Evans. This kid is really fast, another track star, but Jaheim is also super strong and not afraid to put his head in. Three seconds, two, one, the play clock expires. That's a delay of game. That's the last, well, 
Honestly, I can see this on both sides of the coin. Number one, you don't want to get extra yards added on, but you want to give your offense a little bit more extra space to work. Yeah, just it's, some room. Yeah. Especially against NAU. Obviously, up front, they have the size advantage, but Texas College has the speed. You give that speed more open space, you know, maybe something better could occur. Could be a smart strategy by Coach Jackson, and we definitely know that's what he is all about, his strategy. It's now third and goal from the 10. Brown steps back, looking, fade ball in, don't he caught it! Hufkin has it, it's down at the two. And now it's fourth and goal. Hufkin does it again. And now, this is the game. Fourth and goal, and it looks like NAU is going to take a timeout. That's their last timeout. As we'll take the timeout with them. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson here with you for what could be the last play of this matchup. Eight seconds left. It's fourth down and goal at the two-yard line. Justin, if you're in that huddle, what do you think the play call is? I'm, I'm sticking Cooper on the left-hand side by himself, and I'm doubling my right side with Holding and TJ Hookfin. I'm going to use Hookfin as, my, as my, my distractor, run him across the field, and pray one of these slant out routes in the corner of the end zone is going to be there. Now, I'm looking at Cooper as I hike the ball, but Holden's going to catch it. <laughs> Man. Holden's going to catch it. Holden with that last big-time catch on third down to set up this current play. As we take another look at that play here, looking into this fourth and goal, it's been the theatrics of Brown that has gotten the Sears in this situation, and it might be him to punch into the end zone to give the Sears their first win of the year. This is going to decide who gets their first overall in conference win. Brown takes the snap, getting pressure, it's brought down. That's the ball game. And they use defense holds firm. And that will be all she wrote. That's 95? 95 on the, on the sack right Indeed, there. Indeed, that was number 95. Also with it was Justin Dillard. What number? Number 95 and 96. On the hurry, bringing down Brown. And it is pretty much over. Three seconds remaining. Is first and ten. That could be it. Smart money would say victory formation. Neither team has a timeout remaining as both teams trot back onto the field as it is absolute jubilation for Stallion Nation here at Spartan Stadium. Great, exciting game and a hard-fought last play right there. 95 has been breaking through this offense, this offensive line all day. So for him being hurt, standing up strong, plus hole. And that's incredible. That'll do it. We have a final in H Town. After an amazing game. The Stallions, after being down two scores in the first half, bring it back and take home the home victory and get their first win of the season and move to one and two in Sooner Athletic Conference play. For Your me. final from Stafford Stadium, the Stallions 30, Texas College 26. When we come back, we'll have a pretty short pre post game show and just wind things down after this amazing game. Back in one minute, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Yosemite Roofing on ASN2.
It has been an amazing night, not only for Stallion fans, but for any college, high school, BWE, flag, any football fan can enjoy the game that we've just had. Jared Jones, Justin Jackson back here with you. Justin, it's been it's been a game. Yes, it has. It has been an offensive, defensive, special teams, a five-tool, absolute ASN classic here on ASN2. Justin, any closing thoughts? What have you got? I love the way that everyone brought this game to the wire. Both of these fans have been looking for their teams to compete hard, but also play to the wire. Most of these teams have been, the fans have been leaving. I don't think a lot of these fans have seen the fourth quarter. <laughs> so to, to actually watch their team play to the end, it has to be a fulfilling uh, feeling. Like, I, I personally, I'm, I'm alumni at Texas College. So to see my guys come out here and play hard the whole game, not only am I alumni, but I was a mentor of several of these players. So some of these guys made me very proud today to stand up. In a loss, I'm still proud of them. Now, as a sports information director of the winning team, you're talking about somebody being due. These guys get made fun of by their own cafeteria lady on campus. You understand me. So this is some pride that's going to hit, but also some satisfaction for this program. Satisfaction. That might be the one word to separate it all. Our Yosemite roofing goat of the game will go to the Steers receiver number two, TJ Hookfin and his ability to get out of bounds. Justin, you in agreement? Of course I'm in agreement. You have to protect yourself. This is a hard fought game. This is football, physical. We're trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to hurt you, but I'm trying to hurt you. You know what I mean? And he finds a way every time to get down and out of bounds. But his hands and his speed is what took him to the top of receiving charts today. TJ Hookfin, our Yosemite Roofing GOAT of the game, sponsored by Yosemite Roofing, your local GOAT of roofing. What a game. What an absolute game. After four quarters of fantastic football, we have a final. The Steers fall on the road as North American rise into the sunset victorious under the beautiful Houston skies. Your final, North American 30, Texas College 26. For Justin Jackson, for Nick Jordan, Matthew Hermans, and the rest of our fantastic Antler Sports Network crew, this is Jared Jones saying so long, everybody. Once again, your final, North American 30, Texas College 26. Until next Thursday, so long, everybody.